YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. I got the Grand Cruiser, which looks surprisingly like a Cessna 310. This is by Dynam. We have the ready to fly transmitter here. And yes, this was a bind and fly. And look at that interesting pilot in there. Looks a little bit like a square. It's a little square. We're gonna see how it goes. 2200 milliamp 3S. And yes, I have been trying to fly this plane for a long, long time. Elevator, ailerons, rudder and steerable nose gear. Take off flaps, here we go. Whoa, there it goes. <laughs> There's the gear, oh gorgeous. Guys, it's pretty windy. That thing is just handling it like a champ. It just feels pretty solid. Not auto leveling right now, just stabilization. That thing looks gorgeous. Oh, you see the LED? Mm -hmm. Nice. Couple clicks of trim needed. That's 100% throttle there. What I'd really like to do is go to the low rate setting because I feel like the low rates would help kind of make it calm down a little bit. So if you guys aren't currently aware, we are filming on November 11th of 2020, and it's just kind of becoming wintry-like the last few weeks. We had a gorgeous run of 70 degree days. After our six inches of snow. Yep. Look how slow it is. It's like the exact it's opposite crazy. of the plane we just flew. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Granted, I don't want to talk about that because who knows what order things are going to come out. I love the way this plane looks. The stabilization is good, but I feel like I need way more coordination in the turns to make it look right. I am going to work on the trim for the elevator. There we go. So much better. Very forgiving airframe. It just doesn't want to stall. 50% throttle and she just flies all day long, no matter what you do, no matter how dumb it is. Let's do a pass here in front with the sun. I mean, it's just super easy to fly. And this is the Dynam stabilization here. It is windy. I don't know if you guys can tell from the windsock there. Okay, right in front of the driveway here. It's got plenty of power on 3S to do what it needs to do, but it's definitely not fast, which is actually the way I like it. Look at that shadow up on the tree line. That's so cool. I know, you're making me nervous. Why? Because the trees. <laughs> Little rudder action there, trying to coordinate and keep things flat as possible. Hey, just out of curiosity, let's see how it does in the auto leveling. Okay, so there's auto leveling. Man, that thing snaps auto level. Okay. The auto leveling is pretty good at auto leveling. I wouldn't say I have the same level of confidence as I do in other brands. You kind of have to tell it to, to go up, which is expected with auto leveling. The sun is about to crest that hill and I just looked over at it and it blinded my eyes. I got a big dead spot in the middle of my vision now. So yeah, this is with auto leveling. It's actually doing a great job. I, I feel like the limited bank angles are very oscillative. So I would, I would say that if you're wanting to get that, you know, really dialed in, refined, uh, you know, safe performance, you may have to spend a little bit of premium and get their, their goodie. But I would say this thing does the job. I'm out of the auto leveling, just in stabilization now. Boy, that thing is gorgeous. Look at this, look at this right here. It's got plenty of power. I feel like the tail kind of drags down a little bit, but it could be a symptomatic of the wind. Maybe we just need a little bit more nose weight too. Let's do some acrobatics here, just to show you can do it. Oh yeah, you're not gonna typically see that in a Cessna 310. 
unless the pilot has borrowed the plane from an airline <laughs> and he's about to quit life. Gorgeous. Look at this, the way that relaxes in here. Look at this. Just right here in front of us. Guys, it's just right there. It's just, it's not even a challenge to, to get that thing down for a low pass. Just trying to stay in the power for that turn because the wind going from being at your nose to your tail could really cause some problems for you. Okay, stand on top of the power lines here. Oh, gorgeous, totally gorgeous. Guys, this plane's been out from Dynam for years and I have wanted it so bad. And I just have never had a chance to get it until now. Here we are, here we are. Look at this thing. Okay, takeoff flaps. Whoa, full landing flaps are a little bit crazy. I'm gonna have to dial in the, uh, the landing flap performance here. Okay, here we go, here's full landing flaps. Look how slow that thing gets. Good lordy lord. Okay, so check this out. Let's just show them how slow it's really going. A little bit of wind from our tail or from our nose right now. Look at this, look at those barn doors. Look at this, guys, I could probably catch it. Look how slow that is. You wanna go walk next to it just to show people? Just kidding. Differential thrust would help on these really, really, really slow passes, guys. Just to keep her from stalling. Kicking the rudder around, trying to keep it flat so we don't induce a stall. Gorgeous, totally gorgeous here, guys. Man, I just love that you can see it so good. It's one of my favorite, favorite features of these planes is when you can really get in there and see it. Okay, take off flaps. You'll notice there's no delay, so it's just a fast acting sort of thing. Okay, right down the runway here, camera crew, you good? Mm -hmm. Just a little teeny, 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 tiny bit of propensity to want to porpoise with the stabilization. And I'm trying to resist that. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that silhouette, guys. Like I said, not quite as refined as what you might find on a AS3X plane, but still pretty stinking good. It's not hard to fly, that's for sure. Keeping it below the power lines there. Really like the way it flies. Feels like maybe the propellers are a little bit out of balance and that's why you're getting that noise. I got a little bit too close to the house there. Did you notice how close I was? Yes. <laughs> are you having a nervous breakdown camera yes. crew? Okay, here comes the gear. That was so easy. <laughs> oh, guys, it's so fun. You know, when you get a plane that's just easy to fly and it does everything you want it to, it makes you feel really good. And guys, not all planes are that way in case you hadn't figured it out, which is why you have guys like me that do videos like this. Look at this. <laughs> it's just about 12 inches off the ground. You gotta love it. Look at this. Barely moving here. We need a heavier battery in there. I think that would make it get that nose down a little bit because our pilot, he's such a square, you know. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I love the clear windows, but I don't love the fact that you can see our pilot is a battery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, get that rudder working, Brian. Goodness gracious. Okay, so you know what I just realized we never did? Have we a timer. Ne we never put a timer in, which can't do on this transmitter. And we never put in a voltage alarm. So we're gonna try with uh, takeoff flaps. Oh geez, that thing porpoises like crazy. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna try to bring it in just really slow, really slow. <laughs> Take 20 feet to land. Did you see how short of a landing? The wheels touch down. Okay, so let's just see. Yep, that pretty much will get off the ground in 20 feet too. Full landing flaps will do it for you here, okay? Okay, here we go. You're getting into the throttle. <laughs> I gotta really get up here. Come on, guy. You can do it. 
<laughs> it's just right here. Okay, we're trying this again. Now that we have the sun over the hill, let's switch directions here. We're trying what again? We're Just come over here, camera crew. <laughs> Guys, there is something about knowing where the switches are when you want something to happen that just makes it a lot easier. For instance, my switches are so backward from what I'm used to on this transmitter that it's like, it's not really hard to fly this plane, but I have to really think about it because I gotta make sure my gear are out and things like this that I would never, I would never give a second thought to. There we go, guys. Okay, let's show you some ground handling. You gotta put a little down pressure on that elevator to get it to have the nose down. Gorgeous. Guys, you know, some of these older planes, some of them are great. Some of them are super good. I just tested the gear for you. <laughs> I think this thing is great, but I think what we need is we need to throw in a different battery and come right back. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got something new. We're gonna open this up. This has actually been on my list of planes for years. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying desperately for many, many moons to get it. I don't know why I was trying so desperately. I think it was one of those things where it's like, every time that I got ready to pull the trigger on it, something else came up or it just wasn't available or whatever it was. I don't know, you name it. There was a million reasons I didn't end up with it. But I have it now. Oh yeah, the Dynam Grand Cruiser, which looks mysteriously like another plane. Oh yeah. This is a SRTF. I don't know what S stands for, but I know ready to fly. They offer these planes in plug and play, bind and play, and then ready to fly. So I don't know why they, they have P's and then F's, but whatever. I, semi, semi ready to fly. Is that what that was supposed I to mean? I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, I was really impressed with the PT-17. We did that the other day. It was a pain to put together, but it's a beautiful plane and it flew really good. Mm -hmm. And I was really kind of amazed because I, I, we did the ready to fly configuration. Um, I thought for sure this thing's gonna suck and I'm gonna have to pull out the receiver and put something else in so that it flies well. But honestly, it flew really good. And we didn't have dead calm conditions or anything like that. Mm -mm. Okay, so looking at the, uh, the box, of course we've got uh, kind of a color box here, nothing super fancy. Of course, if there's a giant Dynam sticker, I'm not gonna be putting that on it. Um, we show nine gram servos over here three propellers there's three propellers i think what they mean is three blades, three blades. Mm -hmm. easy install battery there's an opening they didn't focus the camera clean clean window there's a clean oh, window dirty you know hold on they used to have an offering for a um it was like a tinted window and i'm wondering if that's what they mean oh really this is a 10 minute flight time supposedly it's for outdoors guys if you have a really big building, you could probably fly it inside. Okay, lid comes off like so. Very high quality box. Looks like it's about the same as the packaging in the PT-17. I did that when we were filming the PT-17 too, which is weird, I almost never do that. Throw that anywhere. This is pieces, probably wing joiners and things like this. I'm, I'm really excited for this plane because I kind of have a, a sweet spot for general aviation planes. Not very full box. Okay, we got spinners and we got props. These are 80, 63, so 80 millimeters uh, by 60 millimeters of pitch. Three blade, it's kind of a weird configuration because it's got that hex in the middle. Oh, and this is a reverse, cool. So we're gonna have counter rotating motors, awesome. That means that the spinners are gonna be different from each other too, so keep that in mind. This one came with two tubes of glue instead of three. And looks like we got the LED controller, which is cool. So we'll see how that comes into play. 
and that's everything in that box. We got the next smallest box. <clears throat> if you don't have an affinity for foam, you're gonna love Dynam because there's like virtually no foam except for the plane. <laughs> okay, looks like we've got probably the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, vertical stabilizer looks really high quality. Paint looks nice, but it's kind of a, you know, just like a jig mask going on there. Got an LED somewhere on there. Looks like it's up at the top, sweet. Got a little anti-crash beacon. Mechanically interconnected, left and right sides. That's beautiful, I like that. We did not have that um, on the PT-17. I was a little disappointed by that, but no big deal. Oh, there's more in here, guys. Looks like the drop tanks and LEDs. <clears throat> Got LED, LED. Sweet, so we're gonna have red and green LEDs on the wingtips. I don't know if those are actually called drop tanks. I think they're called, oh, I'll think of what they call those. But it's, it's not, it's fuel tanks. But they have a special name for it and I forget what it is. Okay, so this is a pretty long box. I'm not sure what it is. I'm assuming it's probably got something to do with the wing joiner on the main wing spar. Um, but I'm not sure. Let's get it opened. Kind of like to know what's going on. The unboxes on these Dynam products have been just fine though. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's plenty of packaging. There's, there's no risk, really thick, high, mm -hmm. high mill on these. Oh, that's the fuse. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't expect that. <clears throat> okay, well that's definitely the fuselage. Wow. These are the clean windows they were talking about. They are clean. Okay, I'm being super careful this time because when we did that PT-17, I thought maybe we lost some components, but I think they may have redesigned part of it too. Those struts for the wing. <clears throat> Looks really clean. Mm -hmm. That doesn't match the white. That's kind of a disappointment. I can live with it. The retracts are the typical Dynam retracts. We'll have to do a 60 degree or below test. Now these are sealed on both ends, folks, so you gotta cut them to open them. But they are nice heavy duty bags. Very heavy. Okay, so the last box is kinda got that air seal. I can't get it to drop down. Get out of there. How am I gonna do that? It's in there super, super good fit, so. I'm gonna open this up anyway, so why don't we just open it? Yeah. Ow. The glue attacked me. Don't do that though. No kidding. It's kind of like a hot glue that they use to put this box together. Goodness gracious. Man, they really have them glued together nicely though. I would far rather have trouble opening the box than have a plane that's broken. And really, we've had pretty good luck. Most of the planes we get are almost always intact with the exception of we had a couple we did for Banggood and they came destroyed so bad we didn't even bother reviewing them. And it was a bummer because I kind of liked the little plane. But that's very few and <clears throat> far between. Yeah. I think we had damage on another plane that we did end up reviewing. It was like a Hellcat, but it wasn't a Hellcat. What was that one? It was a Bearcat, that's what it was. Was it a Bearcat, is that what it was? Maybe. Oh. Okay, here's the unusually overly detailed drawings that are probably not quite detailed enough to actually help you. Ooh, they're in black and white too, look at that. Okay, so they have the kind of the block diagram here to help you understand how things are set up. CG's marked clearly. Step one, step two, step three. That's way better. Way There's like steps. 18 steps. Mm -hmm. like. They show where all the stickers go, or at least a great deal of them. Cool. It's got flap hinges. So I'm hoping that the flaps are included on this wing because I will want the flaps. I do not know for sure if they come installed. If they don't, then I'll have to figure it out. Okay, that looks like, uh, that looks like the decals are gonna be pretty easy to do. There's a lot of them. Yeah. That's one thing, guys. It's, it's kind of fun to put decals on yourself, but I kind of just don't wanna do it myself anymore. 
I, I don't even know if I really liked doing that back when we had, you know, a couple plants a month. It's just a tedious thing. It's fun, like, for the first decal. Yeah, and right. And it's not anymore. <clears throat> or if you plan on doing your own graphics, then it's nice when they come like this because you could just omit mm -hmm. them. Yeah. <clears throat> I know a lot of guys like to get the Cali graphics. And that's really good stuff, but it's not super cheap. Well, and if these decals are as good as the PT-17, that helps when they're bad and it's even worse. Oh yeah, they were high quality. They went on really nicely. I think we only had a couple of issues mm -hmm. where they had forgotten to change the print from white to black. Okay, so that wing, that's everything in there. Okay. So we have all the components out of the box. Now we just need to, ooh, look, we had one penetration here. Oops. Accidental penetration through the sack. We had a little sack rip. Oh yeah, buddy, the flaps are installed on this ready to fly, awesome. When you guys are looking at the Dynam planes, you need to check on that because there are a few planes where flaps were an option. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but when I did my Turbojet 550 uh, back in the day, which is strangely like the Cessna Citation 2. Ooh, that's wiggly. This plane, I can already tell it's gonna, it's just gonna be a different assembly than that PT-17. A lot of stuff to put together there. Whoop, well, I'm assuming that you're supposed to glue that on at some point. Probably. Looks like there's probably decals that go over it too. Oh yeah, true. Looks like what we've got for motors, we've got a uh, BM2815 a3, which is an 1100 kV motor. And it looks like we've got uh, pretty much straight on. There's no down, there's no down thrust angle and there doesn't appear to be any, or if there is, it's just very subtle to the right. But see, because we have counter rotating props, we should, we should not have tons of torque roll to one side or the other because they're gonna counter each other out, which is pretty cool. Now these wires are soldered and heat shrinked. So looks like we've got an XT60-M. So it's got this, it's got a little bit more robust XT60 connector, which does work with the IC3 um, connectors if you have smart packs, because we do a lot of smart packs on this channel, obviously. And we had good luck getting those on there. Uh, these do have an up and a down. So if you're going to slide those back on, you have to get them in the right position. If you try to put them on backward, they don't fit. Everything looks satisfactory. Let's get, let's get all these pieces out of the bags. We gotta come up with something to do with all these bags now. It's called throw them in the garbage. That is a really light fuse. I like that. Got a little bit of surface damage here. Nothing too aggressive. Looks like the glue's got a little bit of yellowing there, but it's just really, really light. This thing feels nice and solid though. Okay, does that pop free? Yeah, you gotta really pull that and then it comes out. That looks like it's gonna be a sucky place to put a battery. Mm -hmm. Look at where that is. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah, not looking forward to that part. Um, okay, so we've got the wires tied together. These are all nine gram servos. Looks like one nine gram servo does the steerable uh, nose gear, which is currently retracted, and then the rudder linkage as well. Would have liked to see a bigger servo for that application since it's doing two. But it is what it is. They are plastic geared, so you'll want to be aware of that too. If you're going to run two control surfaces on a nine gram servo, but it needs to be a pretty light movement, light action. I haven't had a lot of problems with uh, the servos on the PT-17, but I've only flown it, what, twice? Mm -hmm. So, but they had bigger servos installed on that. I think they did 17 gram servos. On the PT-17? Yeah. Oh. Well, there was two that were nine, I think, and then two that were big. Maybe there were 14. Okay, so we got the LED wires kind of tangled up here. So you have to undo those so you can feed those into the wing. Kind of hard to get that undone without marring the finish. See? 
That might have been marred before I even got it. <clears throat> and then one more tangle here. Okay, that's not too bad. A little bit of extra tail there. Nothing you can't grab with your fingers and just pull straight off. Looks like these are gonna glue on, so that'll be probably not super fun. Oh man, we gotta pass that wire all the way through. Oh, there's a channel here, it shouldn't be too bad. See this channel? We're gonna have to pass that through, but it should go through pretty easy. And then that's why they left this stuff open. It's magnetically attached, that's actually well designed. Look at that. Wow. Magnet, 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 magnet. That's crazy. That's like really crazy. surprisingly well engineered because they knew we had to pass this one single wire through. Wow. Goodness gracious. That's crazy. I'm just going to stick this in here now. I'm going to say this is not the build. No, this isn't the build, but I just want, I'm, I'm curious. I want to satisfy my curiosity about how that works. Hmm. That actually wasn't bad at all. I was really kind of dreading that as soon as I saw that wire. Yeah. That makes me feel a whole lot better. And then I bet the decal is going to cover it up. That's a piece of glue. I thought it was a cracked case on there. Clearly labeled reverse servo. That's good. Hmm. Okay. This one is probably also reversed. No, nope, that one's standard. This one's reversed because they're in the same orientation. That's how you can tell. Then these are good servo holders that hold the aileron servos. The flaps are big. I bet they're going to work well. I'm really excited to see this plane fly. Looks like kind of a sloppy fit here. See that? Mm -hmm. That's going to glue together poorly because the surfaces won't mate up well. Mm -hmm. I'll probably have to choose one way or the other and then mate it up. I wonder. I could pin it on there with some toothpicks or something too. Is that the other side? Are they one way or the other? That might uh, be a really dumb question. I'm a hundred percent sure that's right. Okay. It's, it's not really too ambiguous to me, okay. but, um, I think it's going to go together okay. I'm just really surprised that they used the magnets. It seems like it would have been easier to have us just glue that in when it was done. But that's pretty cool. I'm you also have access then to the motor though, right? If you would need to do... Yeah, because this thing just slides off. Mm -hmm. Both sides do, which is pretty cool. And we're going to probably need that to get this all situated because those two nylocks are going to position where the prop and uh, spinner go. I just wanted to see how well that fit together. So it looks like the wingtips are probably the only issue there. And then this is for an antenna, presumably. I don't see anything on the drawing on the picture. Hmm, I don't either. That's weird. I wonder what's there. Maybe it's another light. That'd be cool if it was. All right, let's open this bag. Sorry, guys. I kind of dived into the uh, build there out of order, as the camera crew mentioned. That feels like that's going to rip. And the last time we did this, that did rip. So before we move on, I'm just going to like do this right now. This is definitely not a desirable thing, but it is a real thing that may save you guys some trouble later on. I'm going to use regular packing tape just to show you this is just a standard plain Jane packing tape. There's nothing special about this packing tape. Um, it doesn't take much to do this and do it right. The nicer the packing tape is, the better it's going to work. If I was really super concerned about the strength of this joint, then I would go with a more heavy duty packing tape, but I'm not going to even do that because I'm truthfully not that concerned about it. Of course I lost the tail. <laughs> So the way I do this is I'll stick it on a surface like this. I'll measure out about how far I want it. So a couple fists, whatever it takes to measure it easily. Okay. And we have more thick tape somewhere, but I'm just gonna use this because it's easy and it's here. Now this paint will peel off of here. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, so I'm actually gonna stick this down right there and I'm gonna cut this at an approximate angle. See how that worked, guys? I'm just going to leave that on there. This is going to be super duper easy. You can go on one surface or the other. It doesn't really matter which side you go with. I'm going to go right here. They may actually have given us a decal that will do this same function. Um, I believe there's two. There's two. So you would get some level of protection from the decals. 
but this is gonna be nice because it's all the way up and down the joint, okay? Because we did run into a problem with this on the PT-17, and that was a really like small amount of material attached. Mm -hmm. So more than I'm used to seeing, like more, it was less than typical. Yeah. It was more exaggerated problem than typical. So I don't know if, if we just got like maybe a bad one. So this may not be totally necessary on yours, but I'm doing it because it's pretty easy to do now and it's a huge pain in the butt later. See, all I'm doing is I'm just pressing that down into the joint as deep as I can get it. It's really easy to do this now and it's a really big pain in the butt later. So you see, I'm just pulling that open as far as I can. And then I'm just gonna come in here and trim this just neatly. I'm not even gonna super worry about the exact placement because you don't even have to get all the way down to the bottom. But you see, once you get that push down into the hinge, then that will do wonders for the amount of strength that this wing has, this, um, this rudder and vertical stabilizer. And I'm just working my way from the center out. See, see how it's kind of walking at a, an angle because it's pretty hard to get that perfect. Yeah. So then I want to just kind of move it until it's pushed in there all the way. I don't know if you guys can tell. See, since we're all the way opened, we've got a, a nice purchase all the way down. There's a little bit in the middle that I could push it down a little bit further, but it's, it's gonna be plenty good. That'll hold that surface. Now, you could just do one side, but I like to have the symmetry of having both sides done, so I'm gonna do the other side. And that feels about twice as strong already. Mm -hmm. And by the way, guys, when I say it takes five minutes, on film it always takes longer. Yep. Because I have to take time to show you what we're talking about, even though, um, you probably don't really need time to have the explanation on a lot of those things. Okay. Oh, dang it, it fell down the wrong way. Once it sticks to something, I get rid of it. <clears throat> I want it to be really tacky when I put it up on the foam. Goodness gracious, that fell in like the worst possible spot. Good. There we go. And cut it square. Stick it on the edge here. Make sure you got plenty of length there. So we'll just, it's a little bit more than that. Just two. Well, and if you can do something in five minutes that can potentially save your plane. Yeah. It's worth. It's worth a little bit of effort. effort. Plus on this plane, I, I don't know. I'm just, like I said, I kind of got a sweet spot for, ooh, I didn't cut that severe enough of an angle. I need to go a little bit steeper. So, okay. Good. I'm just gonna set this down on the rudder portion and then fold it. I'm opening it all the way up. So then I can stick this down. Just trying to avoid those little, those lines that you'll get. So every once in a while you have to push it back down. And this is nice because then that clevis is gonna bite onto there or the control horn will bite onto it. And then you can just come in here, really sharp, nice cut, really easy. And then take that little piece off. And then you can just start working it down into the joint. If you really want to get super aggressive with it, you can actually pull that back like I did there and you can use a small screwdriver and that'll actually get you something like this and just walk it down into the middle and you can kind of hold the rest of it back. See? And then once you get it walked in there, just make sure it's all the way opened. You can use a Q-tip also. They work nice for this step if you need to push that down into the joint because they kind of squish into the shape of that opened hinge. Like I said, this isn't anything fantastic. You could use even more um, supportive tape. You could use fiber reinforced tape if you don't mind the looks. 
You see I'm just working from one side to the other, from the center out. Oh yeah, we got, we got good, we got good penetration and good bite all the way up and down. So now for that to come off, I have to lose an entire bite here, an entire bite here, an entire bite here, and an entire bite here, or the entire seam has to rip, which means it has to be weakened and then split all the way along, which I just don't see that happening now. So if you get one of these dynam planes and you're wanting to spend an extra 10 seconds to help get it into a better spot, that would be one way you could do it. Then when you apply that decal on there, it's not gonna be quite as critical. Um, the decals are actually a lot thicker than the tape that I just applied, just to give you an idea. So if you don't have good packing tape, you can use some of the backing on there and it'll work. It's just a lot harder to get a piece that's that big and that mm -hmm. wide. There's not a lot of extra on yeah. the sheet. And like I said, we did this one with just packing tape after it was fully assembled with decals and it would have been a lot easier if we would have just done it at the beginning. Okay, so this has two screw receiving points here, which is good. Uh, looks like this is gonna probably pass through something like that. So that's pretty cool, that looks nice. Feels like this has a small carbon, carbon fiber spar, but it's, oh, I had that upside down, there we go. Has a small carbon fiber spar, like really small, look. See this, guys? Mm only goes out to about there and it's super thin. That's kind of disappointing. We got a carbon fiber spar left over from that other plane. <laughs> we could use that. The LED is nice and petite. I like that a lot. Okay, and then of course the other, the other, it's not a canoe. What am I trying to say? I know it's on the tip of my tongue. So now people are gonna answer the question I have mm -hmm. for the next 27 years. They will. Yeah. It's not a canoe, but it's like a canoe. That's the word I'm looking for. But that's gonna go right there. Should be pretty easy to do. All right, so without further ado, we are, well, actually I lied, we have one more bag, so we'll go ahead and open that. This is still technically the unbox, even though we've delved into the build somewhat. Sorry, me, I broke my own rule. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just take a closer look, double checking all the sacks as we rip them open. Oh, it's an antenna, sweet. That's cool. They must have added that at some point. That is a cool looking antenna. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Although I don't like the fact that it tried to rip the seam open when I did that. What are we gonna do about that? Are we gonna stick this down there and use that as a backing as I push on it? Yeah. These windows are not super strong, folks. So be careful when you when you're touching these things, they could pop out. I really like that antenna, that's cool. I had somebody the other day telling me about antennas, if you're trying to make antennas. This is from a, a Cessna 182 UMX plane modification that I was doing. And in this particular video, I was using toothpicks. Okay, look at this. This is the kind that doesn't require screws. That's super nice and super easy, but there's a backer that's supposed to go on there and I don't see the backer anywhere. So that kind of concerns me a little bit. There's usually a piece of black that's got two holes in it and you slide that in and it goes doo -doo 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 -doo, and it zips on there onto these little ribs. Oh. But I, I don't see those anywhere. So then this is the controller for the LEDs, which is super nice to have that. Um, it's really easy to hook up the LEDs in these Dynam planes. So it's super easy to hook those things up. Basically, you just have to have uh, wire goes into an open port or you can Y off of any servo lead. And then this little controller actually energizes the LEDs as such. Two are flashing and two are not. Two are on and two are flashing, okay? Cool, I don't even think the signal does anything on that particular channel. Okay, so then just looking at this, Looks like the spinner, how does that come apart? Oh, it's screwed together. There's screws on there. One, two, three screws. I thought it was just gonna snap apart. Okay, looks like we got a Y cable here and we have another Y cable here, so that's good. 
And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six long screws, like big long screws. Then we have these little rotary doohickeys, rod connectors. I don't know what they're called. Doohickeys. I think the doohickeys. Mm -hmm. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, five of those screws, which are just like a plastic screw. Not sure what they're going to be used for. And then there's a whole nother bag of goodies here, which Dynam is kind of weird about that. They'll send you, you know, stuff that you don't actually need for the plane. So you got to be a little bit on the ball. The screwdrivers they send are actually really nice. I like these screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. Some of the Chinese screwdrivers are the best screwdrivers that you can get that you can't buy. And some of them are the worst. Yep. <laughs> some are really bad. But those are pretty nice. Okay, so then we've got more screws. I still don't see any backers, those plastic backers. That's kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so there is a, an Allen wrench here, which is what we're gonna need to take this apart. So let's just double check that. Uh, looks like it is, but it's really kind of hard to tell. I had problems with the, oh no, that's Phillips. That's a Phillips. Yep, that's just Phillips. I had problems with the Allen wrench on the PT-17 lining up nicely. What was the part that the Allen wrench went on? Or was that the PT-17? I don't know. Was I a, don't even remember. Yeah, I, I think it was the PT-17. But I, it, it went in, you just kind of had to work it in there, which is not desirable. Okay, so this thing comes apart. They are different. The spinners are different from one another. So just be aware. I just want to show you how this looks because it's part of the unboxing. Just kind of evaluating the pieces. There's four or three Phillips screws, really small. And then the way the spinner works is this is going to be, I got to figure out which one goes in this. Oh, backwards. And you're probably saying, well, how do I know which way is forward? Wherever the print is, that goes at you if you're looking at the nose of the plane. So this would be, there's one that turns counterclockwise and one that turns clockwise, okay? So this one's gonna turn counterclockwise, so that should be a non-R. Yep, see it's just an 8060 by three, or times three, and this is an 8060R times three. Mm -hmm. So that one's gonna turn clockwise and this one's gonna turn counterclockwise. So I don't know which motor does what, but we'll find out from looking in the manual, maybe. <laughs> Okay, so show them up close, please. The nut goes into this, that's a nylock, and then this transfers into the back of the prop. Okay, so then that transfers the spinning. And then this drops back on top, and there you have it. That's a pretty straightforward operation. I'm hoping I don't have to replace these props. But that's one thing that's nice about BitGo Hobby is that they have all these different parts, which is cool because I thought we were going to end up having to do all these planes as bind and flies or plug and flies or plug and plays in this case. That's the way they, they call them. And I just didn't want to have to deal with all that. See that? Hmm. Cool. That's a pretty good fit. Okay, cool. So we've got that ready to rock and we've got, it looks like four more long bolts that are the same as what we got before. And then we have four big black screws. Not sure what those are for. And then we got a handful of different screws. I don't even know what to think on that. There's a ton of screws that was in that second bag. Um, I guess we'll figure it out as we go. Now, basically at this point, we need to clean up and we'll come right back with the build. Okay, so if you get the S, RTF, the ready to fly version from Dynam, from BitGo Hobby. It's gonna come with something like this and something like this. This is a 2600 um, 4S. In our case, this plane is designed to actually run on a 3S 2200, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not the battery you're gonna get. So it will come with a charger like this, if I understand correctly. This is a nice little setup. But in our case, we're gonna be trying to fly it on a 2200 3S or a 3000, or excuse me, a 4000 
3S. I might have a 3200 3S. So one of these batteries is what we're gonna use. And when you do go to pick your battery, if you're getting a plug and fly or plug and play, you need to be mindful about the way that the battery inserts into this particular model. See, that can stick all the way up there. It's supposed to stop here, okay? But if it stops there, it's, you're gonna have a really hard time getting your batteries in, okay? So you may find that a little bit bigger battery, see I got Velcro on this side too, which is kind of handy. There's a Velcro that comes on there by default. You could potentially do that and then still get your leads in, but it just depends on how it CGs out. Keeping in mind, if you end up using a smart battery, you're gonna have probably a little bit lighter pack than what comes standard. These are obviously 30C packs and they call for a 2200 3S and that's gonna be a 20C pack. So it's quite a bit less um, oomph. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be playing with. I'm not sure which size we're gonna end up with. And obviously this one was not the full ready to fly. It was just a bind and fly. Now, why is it a bind and fly? My camera crew has told me that I didn't notice, but there is a receiver mounted right there. Yep. So receivers mounted right there. It's the MSR 66A. Okay. So that should be no problem to get that set up. I'm just hoping that we have enough channels on that transmitter. If not, we'll come up with a backup plan too. All right, so the build part of the video is gonna be right now, and that's what we're gonna do right away, basically. The instructions are a little bit better on this uh, channel five and channel six, channel five, channel six. Okay, so we should be able to control the flaps. So throttle, channel one, rudder, channel two, aileron, channel three, elevator, channel four, channel five for gear, channel six for flaps, and then mode would be channel seven, technically. Um, so we'll see how that works. I'm not sure if that's gonna work or not. We do have the Skylord ESC programming instructions in English this time. So if you don't know how to calibrate your ESC, once you get everything bound, power on your transmitter, throttle stick all the way up, plug the battery in on the plane, safely control it, okay? And then you're gonna hear a series of beeps, put the stick all the way down, and it has relearned the throttle range. I saw that in a video the other day and I thought that would have been smart to talk about on the PT-17, but I just forgot. Um, and that's true for virtually all ESCs, not just this plane. Um, okay, so I'm not sure the best place to start, so let's consult the manual. The manual shows putting together this right here. It doesn't say anything about gluing it, and that's probably fine too because I'm just not sure which way is up though. Yeah, see there's a flat, you see the flat here? And then there's not a flat here. So I honestly am not sure. It looks like this, that's right. Okay. So that's gonna get you together where you need to be. So then this wire has to pass through this little slot here. Okay. And that should pop out the other side and I'm not seeing it yet. Not sure how that's gonna work. Oh boy, that's gonna suck. Because we have to get that through this cavity here, right here, you see? So maybe we can get lucky and we can slide this wire down and then use forceps to grab it. I think it's in this empty cavity right now. All right, I have an idea, we'll pause it and come back. Okay. So skewers are good for uh, barbecuing meat and also for feeding wires on your models. Actually, they're not really good for barbecuing meat. Mostly only wires. They're mostly only good for wires. That's true. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this in. The pokey side is just gonna go in here. And then I'm just gonna hold that a little bit with a little bit of pressure. And then that gives me the ability to control this. Okay. And this is gonna go right here. And then if you look through the windows, 
my hope is that's going to feed all the way through and I feel like it's maybe, oh, I can see it, but I'm too low. Okay, just trying desperately here to get that through and I'm not seeing it go through. So my second attempt is going to be to slide this rod through and see if I can, sorry, camera crew, you're going to have to, oh, there it goes. See it's through. See how it's through? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we're through, given that that worked, I can just tape this on. We'll pause and do that. All right. So this is taped on there just real loosely. Now I can just reach up in there real easy and just guide this through. You might be able to get really super lucky and, and finagle that through there, but I, I kind of doubt it. See, there it is. Now it's through. Okay. And then I can just pull this off and then we'll be ready for the next project. Okay. So now that that wire is fed through, we have to finish the assembly of the tail, which I'm not sure if I need to glue this or not, honestly, because this is going to receive screws in two different spots. And I am not sure if that's enough or not. Does it say to it glue? It doesn't indicate anything about... Because they gave us a lot of glue. Yeah. Huh. It just says, it does say lock screws, vertical tail and horizontal tail. Uh, here, there are steps later that do say to glue. Glue and, what? Uh, well, this is for, I don't know. Let go. Those things. Oh, those are the caps. Uh, that's, that's around the nose gear. Okay. Camera but there's crew. nothing that indicates on these first steps to glue. So, okay. So in that case, I'm sort of not sure what to do because I'm sitting here trying to get this, this sticks out and I think this needs to go in and around. Show them right here. See this where my index finger is. Mm -hmm. I got to get under that. So these are supposed to be kind of interlaced together, but they're not going to be. So as I slip this down in, that rod is supposed to pass through somehow. There we go. Okay. Got it. So then this will just be right there. Okay. So that control rod is going to move this control surface. Okay. And then the other control rod is coming out here, which is going to reach to this spot here. Okay. So that should take care of that. And these are glued together, which is nice. You don't have to worry about getting that aligned. Perfect. Now, the other thing is, if you only have two screws, we're just going to use our best judgment here. If that feels like it's anything other than fully secure, we'll just lift it out, undo the screws and then glue it. But it feels really tight up here and it's kind of nice being able to take it apart. So I think we're going to use a plain stand for this because it's going to make it easier to hold on to everything. Big Go Hobby sells a plain stand that is equally good to this. So just get theirs if you want one. This came from Tom. Tom will probably not send you one. I'm guessing. Probably not. <laughs> it was a nice favor from one of our subscribers because he was tired of watching us struggle. And so as I was struggling, I thought of Tom <laughs> and I said, he would be ashamed if I didn't go get that thing he got us. <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's physically installed except for the screws. So the screws are called out as being, I have no clue. No. Dang it. Are you serious? <laughs> Do you really think they are going to be Come on, there? guys. You got to tell us what screws when you give us. Look at this pile of screws, guys. A lot of choices. Look, there's four black ones. Then there's a bunch of these ones here. This is a magnetic tip, by the way, which is kind of nice. I bet these could be it. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to try the long, huge ones because really? yeah, because there's four on the main wing and then these are probably fairly expensive screws. So I don't think they would have sent us so many if we weren't using them. <laughs> that see, that's a problem guys. Yeah. If you send us extra screws, we got to know where they go. I mean, if you send us like 40 extra screws, that's kind of an issue. That looks way too big for that hole. I'm just, I'm just saying it seems to fit just is using, it, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's purchasing. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely 
pulling the foam together, so I don't feel like that's too bad. Now this one, it could be correct, it could be incorrect. We'll find out in about 30 seconds. And yes, I am using the provided screw driver. And it seemed to be working pretty good, so. I don't really think that should have to be driven yet, though. I feel like maybe I didn't hit the hole straight. That one, hmm. Because at this point I should be idling through. Sometimes if you don't get proper alignment, it gets to be in a real bear cat because you go next to the plastic. And I think that's what happened here. No, it's just, this probably is not the right screw though, I bet, for this one. If, I'm feeling the other side with my fingers to make sure it's not protruding through. <laughs> Cause you need to be mindful that. So far so good. So far so good guys. Whatever, whatever gets the job done. Okay, so it's in there. I won't complain. Now let's look at this. Let's look at the durability of it. It's in there, it's fine. I don't think there's any issues there. The uh, rudder attachment point was the only issue. And to be honest, you know, this one was a little bit better than that PT-17. PT-17 was just bad. It was the worst part on that plane. Okay, so now the wing, we gotta glue these ends on. And I think, I think once these get glued on, we can either tape these or pin these in. And to be honest, I'm a little bit inclined to pin them in with toothpicks. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're gonna do. So all sorts of kitchen utensils getting whipped out today. Um, I've done a million repairs this way and it's always worked really nice. So I'm gonna do that today. Uh, the instructions do not tell you to do this, by the way, this is just yours truly. So when I pin this, I'm gonna pin it in such a way that when I pin it the other direction, I'm gonna pin the, the front and the back, I want it to hide itself. So it's kind of cool because I can just I might even be able to go through, nah, I'll just go here and just make it easy on myself. I already have a tube of glue that's open from the PT-17. So in true cheapskate fashion, I'm going to use it up before I open <laughs> the next tube of toothpaste that's not toothpaste. If you use this as toothpaste, you're gonna regret Don't do it. Don't do that. Don't do that. You should be happy, I'm getting rid of one more thing in our junk drawer. Yeah, but are you gonna actually throw it away when it's gone? Yeah. Okay. But then there's like three more in I there now. I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, so this is just gonna be right here, goop it on there, spread it around, and then I, I've already kind of got the wire chased through, so on the other side, we'll have to um, obviously add that step in there. So now if you really want this to work nicely, the, the best thing you can do is put that glue on there and leave it on your wife's counter and then hide. Just kidding. Do that and then let it set up for a minute. I'm gonna have my toothpick holder in there. I'm not gonna get it on your toothpick holder. It's irreplaceable. I know it is. That was a custom built job. It is. Actually, this, is that where the control surface is? So I don't think we actually need a glue there. So we need to wipe that off. If you get a little extra in there, just wipe it off. Mm. This spot here, sorry folks. Okay. Then we're just gonna let that sit for a few minutes. And you're like, what, are you serious? Are you crazy? Where did I put the tube? There it is. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the other side. This time we're not gonna put any glue from like here back. Okay, so we'll just get a little bit of glue out there. And then a little bit more right there and a little bit more right here. And we'll just smear that around. And then we'll smear that around and smear that around and get a little bit of smear going. And then over here, we're gonna smear it around a little bit more. We're getting pretty close to running out of this tube and it's popped in my hand. I hate it when that happens. Okay. So now that we've got that glue there, we are gonna let that set up you know, you could, I'm thinking I need to just set that down so that it doesn't get on the counter. Yep. So we'll just set it like that. Okay, so that tube is spent, it's gone. And that lid is gone. 
So now what we need to do is, if you get that stuff on you, get it off your fingertips so you don't touch the surface of your white plane, because then you're gonna have like a big, like, basically big creamy mark on the side of your white plane. I thought you were gonna won't, say a booger. Won't be good, won't be good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna let that set for just a second and we'll look at what the instructions told us to actually do next while that sets up for a second. They're like, do not glue the pylons. Pylons. Just kidding, guys, it didn't say that. They're called pylons. It actually does say to glue it. And it says 704, so whatever that type of glue is, is 704. So now they're suggesting putting the spinners and getting all that assembly done. So I think really the next thing for us is gonna be to stick those things together and pin them. Okay. So we need to have our tube of glue and a little piece of paper towel ready to rock and roll for this next step in case you make a mess, okay? So we're gonna grab this. We gotta have this ready to go. Pierce the tip. Oh, jeez. It just came out all over the place. I hate it when it does that. Exciting glue. It is extremely exciting. Okay, so now the next step, of course, is gonna be, I wanna get this ready to pin. So I've got all my tools in hand, and like I said, just this stuff starts tacking up fairly quick. And when I say tacking up, this should stick together nicely now. Okay, so we're just gonna slip this. You see how it's sticky, sticky, sticky tacky, okay? And then this, I've got just a little bit of glue on the tip. And my hope is I'm just gonna slide this in and just penetrate until it holds. Okay. You'd be surprised how big of a difference that makes because it'll hold it and pin it in place now and it will stay in place then for the duration of the build instead of constantly trying to undo itself, which just drive you nuts, okay? So the reason we opened that one is because I was gonna have to penetrate that and get a little bit of glue on the outside. Okay, so now this one, I'm gonna go at an angle like this so as to kind of hold it together, irrespective of the other positions, okay? So you have to go pretty steep on this thing because the wing is not very thick here. Okay, so now that's gonna hold that, and it's gonna actually do a pretty good job of holding it. Uh, the other thing too that you can do is if you have a pair of forceps, forceps work really nice to feed them in, and if you aren't so fortunate to have a pair of forceps, you can use needle nose pliers too, which is a little bit more common, so I'll use that for this part of the build. So now the smaller the tip that you use here, the better. Okay, because you're gonna mar the finish just a little bit there. So on a white plane, you can get away with lots of mistakes. Okay, just grab the tip of it and slide it in. You see how, see how stiff it is already? Okay. That will hold that thing on there super strong. Okay. I like it. That should be pretty good. And that's already gonna hold now. So the worst case scenario is, well, I just have to kind of push this together. You can also tape them together and that would, would also work well, but I prefer to pin them because then they're just strong from the beginning. And when you're flying along, you don't want to worry if those things are going to come off. And it's such an easy step. It took us like an extra two minutes. <laughs> My wife always loves it when I add these extra two minute steps to these super speedy builds. All right, so this time, same thing. We've kind of got the glue already smeared around. See how sticky it is? That's way better, yeah. That was a good call, letting it sit for a few minutes like that. This one actually fits a little bit better, mm -hmm. so it may not be quite as critical, but I do want this thing to hang into the opening of the sink in this case. And then we are gonna go ahead and pin it. This time I'm gonna go just a little bit steeper angle here so that they counter each other a little better. I went a little bit too square on the other one. So I just stick that in there and get it coated in the, the goodness. And I don't wanna let that sit long because it'll be really hard to ram it in the hole then. Okay, remember you gotta go at a pretty steep angle here. 
Okay. So this is going to be like a staple. So it's going to hold that in. Okay. Just grabbing a little teeny bit of it at the end and just kind of forcing it together. Okay. And that's going to hold that together. Super easy little trick that works well in this case. Kind of the same thing here. And if you do it when it's just freshly dipped, then it'll make it a lot easier to actually slide that through the foam. So. See how I'm like, I'm almost flat with the, the surface of the, the wing. Okay. Because then it won't stick through and it won't be visible from outside at all. Oh, dang it. That wasn't so good. All right, so now we need to basically move on to the propellers. And I'm actually gonna turn this wing just so that those things can rest right there. That whole setup was a pretty good setup until I slipped and dragged this through the foam, which is no good. But it's kind of the nature of the beast. Foam gets marred easily, but you're never gonna know on the plane. Plus a decal should help to hide that little bit of a scrape I made. All right, so now we need to also get these wires embedded in here. So that's gonna be kind of, they didn't really talk about that expressly in the instructions, did they? I don't believe so. Okay, so we'll just lay these so that they're real easy to see where they go. We don't have to try to reinvent the wheel too much. Okay, so now one other trick, um, when you're sticking these things down into these grooves, if you have a choice between like a red and a black, depending on which color you prefer, the black is probably gonna stand out a little teeny bit more than red. And then if you have an opportunity to put the orange out or the brown out, just think about that as you're making your decision. Um, there are some colors that are gonna hide a lot better. So pick the side that looks better to you. And sometimes you just gotta go with the direction it's lying. Okay. And I'm actually gonna take and put just a little bit of that glue down into this channel. I'm just gonna dip into that or from where I opened it. There was a little bit in the tip when it's splooged out of there. Okay. It doesn't take a lot to hold those wires down. Um, and many times I find myself putting a piece of clear tape or a decal over these. So depends on if there's a decal already gonna cover it. So we'll wait until the end. Okay, so we're just spreading that little bit in there. And I'm probably gonna take and just do a little bit more. That one popped open really messy. Whoa. That's why you normally don't do this in your kitchen. I'm gonna show me. Okay. And some of these glues are gonna have a tendency to yellow over time. I have no idea if this one's gonna yellow or not. Okay, so just holding that tight and pushing it down. That worked really nice. Okay, so then this little cavity here is already stuffed with a servo wire. And it looks like it kind of, yeah, we've got enough room. We should be able to slide this in. Yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. So that pushed it down in there just fine. Oh, broke my tool. Dang it. I hate it when that happens. Just snapped it right in half. Could you use a small screwdriver too? You could, but if you do it too hard, you're going to cut your wires. But you could do that too with the toothpick. These are pretty fine wires. Okay, so now that you're over into this cavity, um, you want me to try it with the screwdriver is what you're trying to say there, camera crew? No, I was just wondering like if you yeah, like the, are going to do the toothpick thing, you don't have them out. 
If you don't have toothpicks, then you could use this screwdriver, but just be mindful that you can rip through the sheath and then you can make a short and then you won't be happy. I'm just gonna drop that into the main part of the fuse there. And that's good. So now you could glue these on, I suppose, but honestly, I'm not sure that that's necessary or not. So we'll just put that on. If it, if it fits, it ships as far as I'm concerned. Okay, cool. Just kind of giving it another push to make sure everything is still tightened in there. The pins were more necessary on this side than they were on that side. This side was a tighter fit to begin with. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this red and black wire channel. We're gonna get some glue down in there, just like we did on this side. It's really not a super hard process. I mean, you can really make it as hard as you want or as soft as you want. All right, so once we get this thing glued, then I think our next move is gonna be, of course, to get the uh, props and spinners mounted. So at this point, we're gonna have to figure out either which way the motors are spinning or we're gonna have to see if the manual discusses that. So while I stuff this in the hole, would you mind checking the manual page okay. to see if it says anything about that? Okay, so once you've put the wing tips on. Which are called? It just says wing tip. No, I know, but we said it earlier and it was right. Is it the pylons? That's what you said a minute ago. Yeah, I think that's what they actually are. It does say wing tip on here. Okay, okay. so then the first step that has to do with the props says, <laughs> Step 11, icon to install clover by propeller. Wow. So this is also a riddle. It's a leprechaun riddle. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, as shown in the installation of the propeller fairing. What? That's literally the only two steps. Where's the installation of the fairing? Is that it's another? as shown, there's a picture. As shown. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is look at the installation of the fairing instructions. And the icon to install clover by propeller. I don't even know what that's supposed to say. The icon? Yeah. The image. Well, every other picture says as shown. Well, as shown, of, of course. course, that's the way you do it. The gear is all installed, right? The landing gears? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Which is interesting because that's what steps. the screws look like. Well, because they show installing the gear in the... You know, and you know what else? Uh, camera crew, come over here. I want to show them the people at home. Looking at this, these screws are the screws that the landing gear would have been installed with. See? Those are the same screws. So then these screws are the screws that would have potentially held together these covers. So if you got a plug-and-fly model... No, see, there's not a, I don't think this is, they don't offer this in an ARF, an almost ready to fly. They offer it in a plug and play, a bind and play, and then a ready to fly. Hmm. So an ARF would require that hardware potentially, because you would get these covers and then you'd be required to put it together. So I'm not sure where it goes. And then look, this is the doohickeys. Oh. Yeah, yeah. so we need two of those. We need one for the rudder and one for the elevator. One yep. doohickey. Oh, we need to glue those things on too. Let's do that. What? While we're waiting, because then they can be setting up. The doohickeys. These. Oh, those doohickeys. These doohickeys. Which we're assuming we have to glue since there's no... No, matter. I'm 100% certain we do need to glue. And then this is the doohickey. The other doohickey. Yeah. So we need to actually figure out which side to put them. So when you install these uh, control horns or control arms, control horns are on the actual... Um, wing surface, I think, and then control arms are on the, on the servo. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. They're control things. So this goes on there somewhere. So it either goes in the big hole where it fits or it goes in the small holes where it doesn't. And if you put it in the small holes, you're going to have to stick it in so that it opens up and it gets bigger. But that doesn't usually work very good. It depends. Sometimes it works great. 
So you can see that this is going to need to be on the top. And look, we've got one nut and no lock nut and no way to secure that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other nut off of the other doohickey and I'm going to jam nut this nut onto that shaft. And then that's going to allow this to be able to pivot without undoing. Okay. okay. Did, did you get all that camera crew? Sure. So doohickey number two, I'm going to take this doohickey nut off. And once I get the second nut, that's going to jam nut the first nut, but it's going to allow me so that I don't have to tighten this to the extent that this won't move because that needs to be able to move free. Okay. Ish. Okay. So that's still moving. Gosh, I don't think there's enough. I don't think there's enough shaft. There's just not enough shaft. We're just going to have to glue it or something because otherwise there's no way if you tighten this all the way. Okay. It's going to just come off. Well, no, well, I mean, it could, but what's going to happen is every time you move the linkage, then it's going to bend the control rod is going to have to bend to make the action. Okay. So typically this would need to pivot free. So I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. I don't think there really is an answer for that. Hmm. Oh, gross. Ew. Somebody got glue all over it. That's perfect actually. Cause then I can just put that glue right on the threads. Okay, so you see this? I'm going to tighten that, which is not really the ideal way of doing it. And then I'm going to grab my Chinese screwdriver. Where is it? The Chinese. It's over there on the other side of the wing, right by Oh, it was hiding. Chinese screwdriver? Let's see if this works for this thing, for the doohickey screw. So now that's going to close and bite the control rod that's going to allow us to hook this on there, okay? That's going to control the rudder. Okay. So we're just going to slip that on to the doohickey. You know why they come to Brian Phillips RC, right? Yeah, because the terminology, the, doohickey stuff. The, ter yeah. the terminology. And so they can learn the RC ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. So obviously that needs to get glued. So it stays. And if you look, this would not have reached all the way through the control surface. So it is actually supposed to be glued. So now in this case, I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to cut free my little bit of tape so that we can get glue straight onto the foam as opposed to gluing onto a piece of tape. Sorry, this is going to be kind of hard to film because I'm going to be blocking it left and right. Okay, so that's pulled out. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to just take and score this and I'm going to score this and I'm going to score this and then I'm going to walk it all the way to the edge and I'm just going to take the tip and try to get that tape out of there. See? So I got the tape. I got at least part of it. Oh, there we go. There's the rest of it, but I don't want to undo it from the hinge area. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So now I can glue this with some level of, uh, good contact. So in order to glue this, I want to get a pretty good amount of glue on this. So I'm going to actually put a little bit on the surface here. I'm going to force a little bit in the holes. And then this is the type of thing that you don't want to have to do if you're going to fly the plane right away. So I'm going to just slide that in there. And then I get a little bit of glue on the surface and I'm actually going to do kind of like what we did on the other side. I'm going to let this set up for a minute, which is a really hard thing for me to do because I have to be patient. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to let that sit and that glue is just going to, kind of hang out there and kind of tack up a little bit, but I want to make sure I have that whole surface area covered. Okay. Now we have to do the same thing to the elevator. That fuse is so light. It's awesome. I love that. Okay. So you see this schmutz on here? See that there's schmutz on that rod. If there's schmutz on your rod, you better grab your rod and clean it off. 
Okay, center your servo ish. Center your servo for the other one, for the linkage that goes to your elevator and rudder. So now this one we don't have to take any tape off, so I'm gonna just get a little bit of glue going here. Okay, this is just gonna kind of get that so it's tacking up while we work. Okay, because that stuff does take a minute or two. And I'm just gonna flip this upside down so the glue doesn't run off onto the paper and undermine our ability to take it off of the paper. So we need to install a doohickey on this one too. Hey, the doohickey here. So this is gonna go here, and that means the doohickey goes inside like that, okay? So we'll just take the nut back. I'm actually just gonna die, I'm just gonna put glue on it, just on the tip. And that's just gonna gum up the, it's just gonna gum up the works. Just throw that anywhere, no big deal. So that's gonna almost be kind of like a nylock. It's not gonna be as good as a nylock, but it's gonna be like a nylock. Okay. And so I'm intentionally gumming up the works on those threads so it doesn't back off quite as easy. I'm probably gonna have to do that to this one too. And I don't care if that touches the paper, it's fine. Okay, so just a little bit. Just let it get on the bottom there. You guys see what's going on there? And we know where that's going next. So now while this glue continues to set up, I'm actually gonna back this out with my needle nose pliers. It's on there pretty tight, but the thing is, I think it's gonna work better if we gum this up. Cause that's gonna make, it's not that it's gonna, uh, it's not gonna stop you from taking it apart if you need to work on it, but it's gonna stop it from coming off easily without meaning to come off. So you see, I just got it on the threads there. You can also use CA for this and then kicker if you want it to set up real quick. Okay. So I'm just gonna go most of the way there and then make sure that it is in the position we want, which is gonna be going this way. I really would rather that be jam nutted in there because that would be ideal. But I guess we're gonna do what we've got to do. See how that's loosening the nut every time it goes in and out? Because that's what's gonna happen when the surface moves. I try to torque it down. All right, we'll see how that goes. So now this one is getting pretty close. So we can go ahead and put this together now that we've gummed up the works. Uh, put that in the backward way. Now that's the correct way. Okay, so once this is tightened, we can back off the Phillips screw. This Phillips side of things is not as critical because you can torque that down and bite onto the, the rod, the control rod. Okay, so that's real tight, good. So now this is all gummed up and ready to go. So I'm just gonna slip this onto the control rod for the elevator here. And I'm going to slip this into the two holes. Just kind of let that sit. Quite a bit of extra glue, which is what we wanted. And then I'm going to get myself one of my handy dandy broken toothpicks to pull off some of the excess so it doesn't look like slobby mess. This is where you can, you can get a little bit creative and go, go with hot glue or you could go with another, uh, another type of material here if you wanna try to make that work better. I feel like this Chinese glue is some of the best stuff you can get, which is funny because it's like probably the cheapest thing you can get too, but it works really good. 
Um, it doesn't seem like it at first, but then it holds forever. Boy, look at that. This one's stuck up and that one's stuck even. You see that? That's probably not so good. So in order to even those up, do you show the people at home? See this one's square and look where that is. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna go. That's, yeah, that's not gonna be okay. Yeah, and I think it's, strangely enough, it's mostly just at the end here, there's like a twist in it. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to try to twist this. See if we can get it to square up a little bit. Oh, by the way, if you get that glue on your fingers, there's a really good way to get it off your fingers and that is to use Kicker. I don't know why, but CA accelerant will break down that glue. So if you're using Kicker anywhere near that joint, it's gonna basically undermine your joint. So make sure it's set up before you would do that. And even after it's set up, it still will try to undermine it. So be aware. All right, so now this one's really gummed up now. See, super tacked up. All right, here goes nothing, guys. I'm just gonna push the control surface out of the way, pull the rod over. You're blocking my light really bad there, sorry. Okay. Thank you, camera crew. And then ram it in the hole. Oh yeah, that's pretty good right there. That worked pretty decent, wasn't too bad. And then we'll go ahead and grab that little bit of excess just so it doesn't look like a mess. All right, so you'll notice that we did not tighten. We didn't tighten the screws yet because we don't want to exert any force on those control rods or they're just gonna basically come undone. So as long as we aren't running the servos, we should be okay. But I just really wanna make sure that we get good bond on there. So we're gonna give that a few minutes and then my camera crew is gonna help me remember to tighten those screws. Right, camera crew? Yes, of course. Okay, great. So we'll jump back to that in a minute. Let's see how this is tacked up. Oh yeah, that's on there good now. Same thing here, really strong. So you can hold the plane by it. This is the heaviest part of the plane because it's got the motors and the ESCs and the RX. So the, it's got all the flaps, one, two, three, four servos, two retracts. It's actually quite a bit more heavy than the fuselage. So, and you'll find that on a lot of these planes, it's kind of the way it works out. All right, so now the next thing is we need to figure out which direction the motors spin. Have we figured that out yet? No. Mm, okay, well, in that case, I guess the next step for us is to use a servo signal tester, which is gonna be like this, and we'll use a battery to energize the ESC. I think. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we'll try it. Because I need to run the motors to see which direction they're going. Okay. Um, there may be easier ways to do this, but uh, you know, I prefer to do it the hardest possible way, mm -hmm. as you should all be well aware by now. I, I'm just trying to figure out, like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to glue that. Why did they not glue these again? I don't know. Do you need to access them? I, there's going to be decals over them. Yeah, I guess. Okay, true. All right, so we have ESC's power here, and then we have LEDs here. Okay, so those are super easy to figure out. So maybe it would behoove us to just start landing wires, because eventually we're going to have to do that. Right. So there are flashing lights or on lights. So I'm going to go with on. Okay, so the on lights are here. So red to red, brown to black in this case. Ugh, those are kind of hard to plug in. Okay, so red, red, black to brown again. So you could make your lights flash if you wanted, but that would be stupid because they don't flash in real life. Those would be on solid, the navigation lights. Okay, and then that'll just go into the open port. I don't know which port's gonna be open just quite yet. Then of course the ESCs are going to need to be controlled. Um, Right now I bumped a button in here. All right. 
So we need to energize those and then we need throttle hooked up. And it looks like throttle is already hooked up. It's labeled on the receiver, so I feel comfortable unplugging that. On this little smart tester, it says plus, or it says minus plus S. So signal goes here. Okay. And then I'm just gonna energize the, this is a 3S. And you can see that this will receive the plug here just fine. I only heard one. Mm -hmm. It's probably not a good sign. Okay, so now I'm gonna go servo test. So I gotta go to minimum, and then it should arm the servo. But it's not arming. And then we can go to maximum, and this is just gonna set the range. Okay. Now I'm gonna go all the way back down. Okay. So now it should be working. Ah, it's in setup. I wonder if it runs on the other style. So I can go back to the menu. I'll go to this speed. Should I get louder? Mm -hmm. There we go. Now this one's going. Okay, so I'm at the min. I'm gonna actually de-energize them. Now that we're at the minimum position. Then I'm gonna re-energize them. Okay, careful, it might spin. Okay. I think it's trying to, it's trying to calibrate the ESCs. They're both hooked up, which is good. Okay, I'll go to the 1520 microsecond. There we go. That's why you don't do this with your props on. Okay, so there's minimum. There's half. And then there's max, minimum. Okay, so now we can go ahead and go to max. It's evidently getting power from this battery, which we don't want to power that. We want to power it this way, as though it's plugged into the receiver. Now it's going to wake them up. Okay, then I'm going to power this. Now that's max, that's min. Now it should arm. Okay, all right, here we go. So this is just as though we were moving the throttle stick. Cool, there's full speed. And this should shut them off, but I just wanna see which direction they're going. Okay, that's the direction that one's going. Okay, so we're gonna pause it and find the nuts. Okay, so just so you guys can see, there's two engine or two motors here there's two nylocks here and then one nut and one regular nut. That's why they came off. So you're going to need to have the nylock at the end so that it doesn't come out. Unless you had four nuts and then you could jam nut them or some combination of that. So there's supposed to be a nylock on the end, I believe. And just keep in mind, one of them spins one way and one spins the other way. And that's the other thing we're hoping to accomplish here. So I'm gonna go to the slowest speed I can. Okay, so now I can tell. Okay. And I can also set how, how much the, the steps are. So they're going like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's going like this. 
Okay, so this one is going to be this prop, which is the, the uh, 8063, okay? So that's gonna go like this, which is gonna pull the plane forward. And then the reverse is gonna go over here. So the reverse is on the right. Well, that worked nice. Would have been cool if that was in the manual. Mm -hmm. So now in order to actually get to the next step, we have to take apart a bunch of stuff. And when I say a bunch of stuff, I have to take apart the spinners so that we can actually seat the spinners because they get seated up against the nut. Then the prop goes into the spinner. So you have to have these things apart and ready to go, but not necessarily assembled yet because they have to be disassembled to go onto the shaft. Okay. So just taking these apart and keeping my screws in close proximity so I don't have to search for all of them. I'm just gonna make sure this drive fits on here first before I get too far ahead of myself. So far, everything has fit nicely. It's just, these are the types of steps that you have to kind of figure out. Okay, you remember how I was talking about the spinner? Mm -hmm. These spinners are the same, okay? So that means that one of them is going to be cut inversely. Hold still. Oh, sorry. You see that? This is not correct for that prop because this is not a reverse spinner, okay? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to figure out how to get this to seat down there. And it's got a big enough hole that it fits on there, but as you can see, it's not cut to fit. And you can kind of tell in this picture where they superimpose the spinniness. It's kind of, it looks like they had the right one in that picture. So anyway, the whole reason I showed you that was not to beat up on Dynam because you just run into this a lot actually on model airplanes. You, there's, it's really hard to find reverse spinners. They probably do exist, but not in every size, that's for sure. So now this is gonna be mounted like that on the nylock. Do you see what's going on there? So the nylock just has nylon in the tip of the nut, okay? Whereas over here, this is just a regular nut, okay? So there's no nylon in there. So it's gonna be like immediately come off, right? So what we have to do on this step is we have to facilitate jamming the, the nuts. So I have to take off this one and then I'll probably have to take off the other one too because we're gonna have to put the non-nylock. We can put the nylock on the inside or the outside so long as they're jammed. So really technically, I, it might be easier to get a good purchase on the regular nut and then to put the nylock on the inside. It really doesn't matter which one's which because the jam nut is still doing its job. So a jam nut just allows you to stretch the threads internally inside the nut. So then once it's stretched out, it has nowhere to go, okay? So on this side, we have two washers here and we have two regular nuts. Now we have one nylock on this side and we have one nylock on that side. And so I got to take this one. Of course, they're going to be, they should be, one should be reverse threaded and one should be the other way. So that's why this is so weird because I'm having to go backward. Okay. The reason it's reverse threaded is so it doesn't come off while you're flying because it's going the other direction when you run it. Camera crew, does that make sense? No, yeah, but is that one going to go on that side then? Huh? Is that one going to go on that side then? Oh, shoot. Will it? Crap, because it's going to be reverse threaded, dang it. Right. Ah, oh, so frustrating. Okay, never mind. I guess we don't get a nylock over here. That's super annoying, and I totally, you are totally right. We ran into this the other day on our tractor. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was on the turnbuckle we were trying to do this. Mm -hmm. So I guess disregard all that stuff I just said. You're going to have to use regular nuts. So now you get to set the depth, okay? They don't talk at all about this in the manual. So I'm hoping this isn't super hard, but it probably will be. So this is gonna go on like that. And then this is where you set your depth, okay? So I'm just gonna go to the end of the shaft, like so. See how it's at the end of the shaft? Mm -hmm. There's nowhere deeper I can go, okay? This spinner's going over here. This spinner's going over here. 
the prop is already assembled onto it. So yeah, I guess, I think, can I have both nuts right next to each other and just omit the washer altogether? Probably not, because I bet this washer is gonna have to go here. No, yes, that's right. Do you have to have a washer first? No, I have to jam nut it with two nuts. But then how do I hold this on? Because that has to get held on somehow. And it's not gonna be depending on these screws because there's nothing mm -mm. to purchase on the front. So that nut has to be on the outside, which is gonna act as the jam nut. And obviously you can't put a washer on this side because the washer here would prevent you from penetration, mm. which means you're not gonna transfer any of the spinning effect to the prop. Right. Okay, so that's gonna go that way. Then this is gonna go here, I guess, because otherwise how the heck are you gonna tighten it, right? I guess I'm gonna put two of them on there for extra good measure since it came with two. Okay, now this is gonna be reverse threaded, so I'm gonna try to do it backward like four times and then I'm gonna do it right. Those ones are fun to find. Especially on a gray floor. So now the other thing is, ah, I keep doing it the wrong way. Okay, I gotta do it backward because it's reverse threaded. So now when I torque that down, that's gonna minimize my access to this. Mm -hmm. So you were suggesting that maybe there were some decals that were going to hold that on. Well, if you look over here, it looks like we're going to have stripes that go all the way to the front. And then I don't know if this is going to cross that line or not. I think we're just going to glue it. That's fine. I'm fine. We're going to, we're going to glue it. You could probably get away with not gluing it, but I just think it's going to be a nightmare if we don't. Cause I don't think it's ever going to hold tight. And then every little teeny tiny bit of, um, asymmetry in this prop is going to vibrate this to death. Just throw that anywhere, Brian. No big deal. I see it. Okay, I do too. It's by my okay. left foot. Yep. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually glue this cowling on. Um, I haven't allowed this to set up at all. So it might be a bit of a bear cat because it's gonna be all not tacked up. But we don't need a ton of glue either. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go like right here because then it hopefully won't make a giant mess. Who am I kidding? It'll make a giant mess no matter what we do. Wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. It's a really good fit at least. Mm -hmm. So I'm just working that around so that the glue gets spread nicely. Okay, so once that's spread around a little bit, then I'm gonna just take this back off and set it down. And then I guess since we have to do it, we have to do it. So I'm gonna move this and this, carefully not turning it on. And then I'm gonna slide this forward and glue the other side. Because the other side's gotta get done too. And now that we know what we're doing, we're basically gonna run this nut all the way back. Again, these are the types of things that would be a lot simpler if the instructions just outlined them. But I'd be lying if I said I really expected that to be in the instructions. Yeah. I didn't expect them to be in the instructions. At least this side's the correct way. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they sent a nylock on this. Two nylocks, which is great. But like if it's important enough here, then it's because one's going the right way and one's going the wrong way. So one's gonna tighten itself and one's gonna loosen itself. Okay, so we're just gluing around the edge. Shouldn't be anything too crazy. Oh, good catch, Brian. I don't really like to spread that stuff with my finger typically, but it was gonna drip, so. Better on my finger than on the wood floor. All right. So on a scale of one to 10, these models from Dynam, even though they turn out nice, my camera crew is rolling her eyes at me. They're a lot more work to put together, right? I was gonna say, this is not the time to ask that question. Yeah. My camera crew is not, 
She's not enjoying this process today, I don't think. This is a tough weeknight build. Yeah, right, I agree. Because after the whole day's over, then we get to jump into this. Mm -hmm. And it's pitch black at 4.30. Yeah, why does it have to get dark so early? Horrible. Why do we all set our clocks the wrong way? So dumb. I wish we could just not have daylight savings time. Do you want to be really depressed? What? I, was, I saw today that the next time that the sun sets after 5 p.m. is like January something. Hmm. It's like 60 days. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks bad. Okay, so this is set up for a second, so it should be tackier. Oh, yeah. Oh, way, way, more. way more tacky. Yeah. Way more tacky. Not quite as tacky as me still. It's like the motto of our channel. <laughs> okay, so we're going to reverse thread that until it binds. Nope, I'm going the right way now. I need to go the wrong way. Nope, I'm going the right, no, way. the right way. Okay, so now that's tight. So it's spinning it in my fingertips. Now I'm gonna put these two washers on. I don't really think two washers are required by any means. Oh, I have to do this backward. It's so weird. Okay, so now that that's on there, I'm just gonna go ahead and torque it down. I do love counter-rotating props, so guys, it's so cool when it's yeah. done. Okay, and you're like, what are you doing, Brian? Don't, no, don't do it, don't do it. I'm doing it. I'm gumming up the works again. Because I don't want that thing to come off. And I, do, I mean, I don't mind if it comes off when I'm trying to take it off, but I don't want it to come off on its own. No. And so now that's probably gonna, it's probably gonna drip inside of there now. Okay, are you keeping an eye out just yeah, in case? I'm yeah, because those things are gonna shoot like all across the room, I'm mm -hmm. sure now. Hmm, why are you not lining up for me? Yep, that's what I, I knew those things yeah. would wanna fall out. See, once, once we've got one screw started, we should be good. Yeah. So I'm gonna just pick one screw. So you guys may have noticed that our format on the channel has gone to a flight and then build and then radio setup. And we do that on purpose because we know that sometimes these builds are just frustrating. They're frustrating to do. They're probably frustrating to watch. So if you watch the whole build, thank you. But we kind of understand that there's <laughs> certain steps that are not really super exciting. And, uh, yeah, like I wouldn't watch this. I would skip to the next part when I've got this done. But we show it because we feel like we're almost being deceptive if we don't show this step. Because if you're gonna listen to me say how great a product is, and then you don't know about how horrible it went together, then I feel like that's deceptive. And there's one thing that we don't do, and that is we don't deceive you guys. Because what's the point of watching a review if we're just lying to you about how great stuff is or not great? And people have asked us to keep doing yep. the build this way. Actually, the, yeah, a lot of people have asked. Yeah. And I'm sure there's, there's been a few people that complain about it, but I just kind of have to tell them, I'm like, sorry, just get past it. Because there's not a lot of guys that show the entire build. They show like, you know, some commercialized version of it that's like, Wow, look how easy that was. It's the Intelli mop. And it, no, no, it was a pain. And we hated every step of it. But just because a build is hard doesn't mean a plane isn't worth. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you want to give up on it. Sometimes hard is good. I was going to say, usually that's when you don't give up. So, my thoughts are. Exactly. And by the way, this is technically on, so you want to make sure you don't get oh. like in a dangerous position. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that tacked up very nicely. Mm -hmm. So super happy with the way that worked. I've, I've been wanting this plane for so long, though, that dealing with a couple of challenges, it's just kind of part of it. You know, yeah. you get used to this when you're doing these models all the time. Yeah. My camera crew has seen more builds than most of you guys have done. And well, that's not necessarily true. There's some of you that are much, much more freaky than me. 
and you've done hundreds more, but you've probably been doing it longer than us because we've done this all in the course of about six years. Five years, not even five years. What? Or no, almost six years. I was going to say our child. I know. The humanoid. I know. The one that came she out of us. Six. Yes, that one. Us? Us. Well, I mean. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically. You were super. I had the really hard job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, yes, that's the one that usually Actually, helps me with the time. Actually, you did have a Hmm? She was the first one you <laughs> caught. That's right. That's a different channel. Different channel. <laughs> if you want to know how weird we really are. <laughs> Get you in there. I have no idea. Okay, so oh, the spinner is getting pulled together nicely. It does look fine. It does look fine. I was afraid that with that being the wrong no, it's direction, fine. it was going to look really bad, but it actually doesn't look too bad at all. No. Once you get tied down. I just hope they're right. balanced because it's kind of a pain to get these uh, things apart. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just checking all the screws and then we'll test it. But we got to be a little bit careful. I don't want it to like try to run into my crotch. Yeah. That, that would be the end of the channel. <laughs> be like, not doing it anymore, people. All right, so I need to get myself into a safe spot so I can test this safely. And I don't want it to like take off, so don't be in a dangerous spot there, but camera. make sure you have enough clearance to hit the counter. I know. Okay. Okay, we're good. Everybody duck. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Yes. Very cool. That's about 20% throttle, by the way. Okay, so I've got it off. So now I need to unplug the ESCs, but they're still gonna be energized via the control side of it. Okay, now they're dead. Okay. <sighs> All right, Are remember, we done? Is it, is it done? right is reverse. Right, reverse. Right. Yep. Right. Sitting in the pilot seat, okay? Yep, Agreed. So they go in toward the fuse, which maybe some sort of normal thing that I should have known that I didn't, but seriously, if you knew that, you I'd be surprised. You probably would have known that if you weren't filming. Yeah, I probably would have like figured it out. All right, so that was, that was not really as bad as it could have been. We could have had to tie like 475 <laughs> cables back and forth. Um, all right, so now the other thing too we have to kind of be mindful about is that at some point, this thing has to pass to where the battery connects. So we need to be mindful of that as we get ready to hook things up. So now the other thing is, we have a bunch of G's and F's and other letters that I don't know what they do. There's an F, F for flaps, G for gear. These are assumptions, folks. What do assumptions do? They make it. <laughs> they make fools of us all. <laughs> it doesn't spell the same thing. I don't understand what's wrong with that. Okay, so G as in gear, okay, is going to be made it up with a Y cable to G for gear. And I'm just gonna untangle wires as I go. So black goes to brown. This is a Futaba color, color code, and this is a Hextronics color code. So black, red, and white brown, red, and yellow or orange, okay? Yellow to white, red to red, and black to brown, okay? So the gear can plug into the gear channel, which is pretty clearly labeled. And which side is signal? Crap, I did unplug the one thing that would have told me. Oh, look, there's a USB plug on the side of that, nice. Um, all right, well, I guess I'm not 100% sure which way this goes, so I'm gonna try it one way and we're gonna test it. No, we can't test it yet. Crap. Will it plug in both ways? Yeah, oh. these plugs will. If I had a Futaba plug, I could check it, but I don't know. So here's throttle. Pretty sure brown goes toward me. Ooh, how hard is it to get to this one? That's what I was just gonna ask. Let's pop the canopy on this one. Yeah, it looks like um, 
signal is actually the other way. So signal goes toward the print. Signal toward the print. Yeah, so I have it backward. Okay. I'm glad I thought about that because that would have sucked to redo all this. Mm -hmm. So throttle um, is here. Okay. Gear is here. Hmm. I'm kind of a nasty twist in the wires. This is the cable management is so much easier if you do this right now than if you wait and try to untangle it later. So get your cable management done at this step instead of doing it later when it's like impossible. Okay, so signal goes toward my belly or toward the nose of the aircraft in this case. And signal is what color? The yellow. Orange. Orange. Orange glad it's not yellow. Never that kids. was so lame. We have our kids tell knock knock jokes if we really wanted people to stick oh, around. Oh man, yeah, that would be bad. They're awesome joke tellers. Flaps, brown to brown. Okay. So F is for flaps, A is for ailerons. So flaps are going on a Y cable. Uh oh. What? What? Um, there's a Y cable already attached. On there. For what? On the there. gear? No, that's the landing gear. Wait, is uh, it? The only thing marked over here is G. G is in gear. Yeah. It's probably a three-way. Oh, you know what? I don't need the Y cable for the G. The G plugs in over there. Good point, camera crew. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Yep. Okay, so the F and flaps go in here. F and flaps go into aux one, I assume. F flaps. There's an F in each wing. Oh, that one just doesn't want to stick in the hole very good. Oh, no, it's in there. Okay, so good catch on that camera crew. The Y cable that we consumed for the gear is actually not for the gear at all. It's for something else. It's for the ailerons. So we're just gonna unplug the gear and leave those loose. So the ailerons are here. I'm gonna untangle this one. Get the cable management halfway decent so that I can bundle it up in a ball and stuff it into the nearest hole when we're ready. Brown to brown. Okay, so where's the other aileron lead? Where are you, aileron? Aileron, there you are. Okay, so brown to brown. Okay. I always stop and look at those because I have screwed myself up a few times in recent history where I plugged them in wrong and then glued the plane together. I did that on the A-10. That was super embarrassing and stupid. And I was sitting there talking about it as I did it. Then I went back and reviewed the footage and yep, did it. Okay, so these are the flaps. I'm just trying to get everything in a neat bundle here. These LEDs are plugged in kind of goofy because they're going to tangle myself really bad. So I'm just going to pull this down and through, see if I can get the antennas unbound. Okay, so those are not going to hook to anything and we did the same thing in the last, but we actually have stuff to plug in these on this plane. We do. Yep. Okay, so now we need to mate up the wing with the fuse. Oh boy. Trying to think of the easiest way to do this. I think if I turn this upside down, maybe I can just lay it on top. Also, we need to glue this in. Oh no, they got schmutz on the side. See that? Oh. Gross. That was not me. Trick of the day, guys. Trick of the day time. Get yourself some tape. Cut it off of the roll. And this will sometimes take off the clear. Ooh. Oh yeah, buddy. See how it's pulling off some of that too? That's why I was annoyed, because you see it pulls off that little mm -hmm. a sheen. sheen. And get that sheen off of there. 
You are gonna put a decal all the way up to the nose. That's true, that's true. So I should probably not worry about that. It's gonna cover that up. Yeah. Okay, so the next step is to kind of attach the wing, but I was just gonna, while I was thinking about it, why don't we get these control rods attached? And by the way, you gotta come look at this. This is ridiculous. Look at the elevator. So the elevator is level here and it's not level here. And you're asking me a good question, which is how are you gonna fix that? Oh, and how is it that far off? Oh, you know what else we need to do while we're kind of between steps? I need to glue this before I forget. Because I'm gonna forget to glue it. And that's gonna be a tragedy. So this time you don't wanna let it tack up because it actually holds in there pretty good. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little glue there. I'm just gonna pop it down in there and be done with it. And then I'm not gonna think about it again until it breaks off. Sweet. I agree. So this elevator has a piece of metal that goes between the left and the right side. And that metal, they didn't get it glued in there totally straight. So I'm just trying to straighten it by kind of bending it, okay? That's probably, I honestly, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to correct that very easily. But that'll cause an asymmetry in the elevator movement because it's gonna pull one side more than the other. So it's gonna wanna roll a little bit. So if that gives me problems, then I'll have to pull this glue out and re-glue that joint. But I think for now it's probably gonna be okay. I think it's probably gonna be all right. So I earlier centered the servos just where they were square and 90 degrees. So now I can just hold this so that it's basically level. And then I can tighten this control horn adapter doohickey. Okay. Sorry, I know I'm blocking your view. Torquing that down really tight. Okay, so now that's attached to the servo. And then this one, same thing, we already centered it. Mechanically, it's centered-ish. And then I'm gonna torque this down. The doohickey adapter thingy, my bobber. All right, so that's in there. And I'm just re-securing the bite. Okay, so we're good there. So now the next step is, I think this actually looks pretty sweet, just plain white. I'm a little bit tempted to not put decals on it because I feel like sometimes the decals on these planes maybe look, they make the planes look somewhat dated. And sometimes they look really good. It just depends on the plane. I'm thinking about it still. All right, so take your bread twisty, twisty tie off, this thing. When they're that color, I think that usually means you can take them off. Okay, so here's your rudder and elevator. What? Wait. Oh, they just have this to keep them from getting lost. Because I was gonna say, you do not hook those to a Y cable. And then this is a trifecta style splitter. So this is gonna plug into your landing gear. Okay. What's supposed to happen is this says elevator and rudder, but there is a Y cable that's supposed to go to the, um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I apologize. It's mechanically interlocked here, okay? So the steerable nose gear and the rudder are tied together already, okay? And so you just hook up one plug and then this is gonna go to the lights. So I think we're gonna wire those up next. And then we have a Y cable here that's extra. Is that the one you need for the gear? No, the gear is going to the trifecta. Oh. So, so the answer is no. Hmm. Yeah. That's odd. All right. Here goes nothing. Maybe I can just slide this under the fuse and uh, make it work out. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. You want to see if you can give them a little better view? Of the yeah, wires. I'm trying to let you get situated. Oh, I'm situated. Thank you. Okay, so gear. Black goes to brown. Okay, so that's plugged in. Then the other gear wire is here. I want to untangle it. So I'm just going underneath until it's out neutrally. And then the brown goes to the black. 
This plain stand has been really nice, actually. It has been. That was a nice thing to do, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Okay, so then this is going to tie all the retracts to one gear channel, which is listed as gear. Brown goes away from the nose of the plane in this case. Sorry, camera crew. Did I screw up your focus no, with my fine. hair? No, actually, I didn't get your hair. Okay, all right, so that's good. Then I have rudder and elevator, which is gonna be pretty hard to reach without getting a little closer. So now let's talk about the extra port. Is there such a thing as an extra port? Mm, no, but guess what? We do need the Y cable. Where is the Y cable? It is. So with the Y cable, to plug in the LEDs, you can pick whatever you want. I'm gonna pick the rudder because if there was a failure as a result of the LEDs or this Y cable, I'd rather lose the rudder than lose the elevator. Because unless your name is Ian, and you think that elevators are optional, then you probably want your elevator. We're probably, we're probably past the, yeah. Ian might be gone by now. Who knows where he is? <laughs> he might be in a better place. No, I mean well, like not well, watching the channel. Oh, he's oh like <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. In a better place, like, I, I meant like he was like moved to Colorado or something, you know, I mean, not like a better place like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, all right, well, here we go. So we have a flashing light plug. Oh, crappers. We have to pick a flashing light? That is really not cool. What do you mean? The beacon Why? has to flash, but that's okay. It probably, flashing would be okay for this anyway. So you see this? Well, yeah. We have two more flashing lights. So I'm gonna tape over these much like what we did in the last plane. Because we do not have any other lights to hook up, correct? I don't think so. Nope, we don't. So I'm just using, this is a super high tech method to prevent shorts. You just put tape around them. I mean, it's not even the correct tape. It's the incorrect tape. What would the correct tape be? Like electrical tape. Oh. This is not electrical tape. It's not. This is for anything other than electronics. And I just broke the rule. Okay, so this is uh, going from the rudder. Okay. So really we're just stealing power and ground to go to this little device. All right, where's the rudder? Rudder is here. So we have to plug in the elevator when we lift up the wing. That's gonna be a joy, a total joy. Well, we can turn the fuse at least. That'll help some. Boy, I think what I'll do is I'll lift the wing and you get those wires in the hole. <laughs> no? Hilarious. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, okay, so then this wire also has to be pushed up to this area. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the lid off so it's easy to remember to do that. Okay. Oh, this is gonna suck bad. So Look it's all at this. It's just gonna be hanging out up in there. It's just gonna be chilling, hmm. chilling like a villain. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Look at this. It's not too many wires at all. Oh my. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, and then we get to press the bind plug too. Oh, goody, goody gumdrops. So, I think in this case we are going to leave this here and we are going to go binding our controller. But you remember our fun process we had of the throttle management on that when we first bound. Uh, yeah, I do remember that. So I think we're gonna wanna be a little bit careful. Whoops. I think we're, I'm gonna tape that actually right now because I don't want that thing to fall off because that'd be a pain. Yeah. So what I was getting at folks is that the throttle, it kind of wanted to start on the PT-17 because there's not really a throttle cut on the ready to fly controller that I know of yet. And uh, okay, so I'm just gonna stick this on here because I don't wanna knock this thing off and have to deal with it again. Okay. Once I get back to where that belongs, I don't wanna go down onto the aileron. So we'll just clip it there. So that'll just give us a nice little contact point. The next step, of course, is going to be to spin around the plane and do the other side. And then we have to be mindful of 
giving this a place to reside so that the props don't hit the counter if they start. So, any ideas, camera crew? I was just thinking. Why don't we tape this and we'll think amongst ourselves and then come right back. Okay. Okay. All right, so we came up with this idea that might work, but it might also fail miserably. So we figured you guys would enjoy watching. So we need, some, we need the props to be free so that they don't hit anything if they would start to spin upon binding. And what that's gonna do for us is that's going to allow us to set up our transmitter to bind with this plane. And why do we care? Well, obviously we have to bind it, but obviously once we, <laughs> that elevator lead is so short and ridiculous. I have to push the button to bind this thing. Right. Okay, because this, the trans, the, the radio system, there isn't like a bind plug. It's, you have to physically push a button, okay? So, and then also I need to make sure that the, I don't technically have to have the elevator hooked up. I could just unplug the elevator to so get it bound. Give yourself some more length. Yeah, that's probably what we need to do. So, cause that would give me a lot of leeway. So we'll just have the elevator unhooked and then that gives us quite a bit more room. Yeah, that's okay. a lot, that's a lot more realistic. That's reasonable then. It's not ideal, but it's okay. So that's what we're gonna do. I don't know what you guys are gonna do, but if you're watching, I'm guessing you're gonna copy what we did. Do you want like a blanket for that thing? Nah, I think that's good enough. Okay. Okay, so now the next step of course is gonna be to bind. So um, we have a 3S2200 here. I don't even know if it's fully charged. Doesn't, shouldn't make a big difference. Uh, the throttle stick is down. All the other controls are neutral. And I'm just gonna control the plane and plug in the power. Oops, excuse me, I'm gonna turn that off. Then I'm gonna plug this in while controlling it. Props are clearing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's plugged in. Now I'm gonna press and hold the bind button. It's a fast flash LED. Now it's a slow flash LED. Now I'm going to turn this transmitter on and the LED has gone from a slow flash Okay, so the gear came down, the flaps went down part, and we have a blue light on. Okay, so ailerons are working, elevator is not because not hooked up, rudder is moving, okay, and then throttle is not. I'm gonna check the flaps. Okay, flaps are moving. They're all the way where they need to be. Now I need to check throttle. You ready? Yes. Okay, so everything is working, as far as I can tell. Uh, gear are down on all three and the steerable is working and the rudder is working but I don't know if it's working the right direction. LED is on, LED is on. And the flashing on the top of the tail. Red is right returning. Yep, that's correct. And then the red beacon is flashing. Yep. So everything but the elevator has been tested. So at this point, we know we're safe. We don't have to hit the bind button. So we can unplug it. Okay. Shut off the transmitter, cycle power. I always do this as a safety check. Make sure that we're gonna come on and work. Okay, everything's coming on. Okay, so it's working. All three modes are working. Show them the light here real quick. You see how there's a green light, then a blue light, then a, like a, what would you call it's that? It's like a teal aqua. or something. Yeah, aqua, aqua, blue, green. Okay, so it's a mix between blue and green. Yeah. Okay, so one is like stabilization and auto leveling. One is stabilization only and one is nothing, okay? I don't know which one's which, doesn't really matter. And we can switch the direction of travel on any of the controls with these switches here. Or okay. you can use a computerized transmitter in your own receiver. It is in the manual, there's like a color code. Yeah, they somewhere. do talk about that. Yeah. Well, that went surprisingly easy. My camera crew was just <sighs> expressing her extreme joy with how well this project was going. <laughs> it's all right, we were both expressing our extreme joy. It wasn't just her. We were doing it together. It's just one person has to make dinner when we're done with this and the other one doesn't. 
That's right, and it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> you guys may not know this, but my wonderful camera crew is also married to me and cooks my meals. She cares so much. And you've seen me before, so you know she's a good cook. <laughs> All right, so these wires need to get stuffed somewhere. Good lordy lord. Jeez. It's just awkward. Couldn't we just tighten the there, bolts there? That's good. And just that call it good. Fine. Hmm. Okay, so now I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. I can definitely see, obviously, the power wire needs to go through to the where the battery is going to be. So that part's pretty easy. Guys, I'd be lying if I told you that I'd never run into this. I run into this every single time I do this type of plane. They're always yeah. kind of a pain. When you get flaps, retracts, and all this stuff, some planes are a little bit more well refined in this way, but not, let's just say in this price point, you're gonna tend to have to do a little bit more work on this aspect. So zip tie time. This is where you want to have a few small zip ties, preferably, and then probably a pair of side cutters. And we're just going to tie them up and it's just going to be, it's going to be the way it is. Okay. You may need to have a hand on that just to hold that steady. Uh, okay. Can you? Yeah. Okay. I know you're going to have to deal with focus issues. So just let me know if you're having issues. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this whole bundle. I got them all nicely laid out. And I'm just doubling it back on itself. And I'm just gonna try desperately to get one gigantic nasty bundle. One nasty giant turd bundle. That's a technical term. Usually I don't want those bundled. Turds? Yeah. Yeah, that is uncomfortable. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna pull this through and tighten that turd bundle. And uh, I'm gonna clip the slack here. And to be honest with you, if that could have been the easiest cable management in the history of RC planes. Still not done. Still not done, true. Okay, so I stuck it in the hole. Don't hold it, just brace it in case it wants to fall there, camera okay. crew. Yep. Okay. Okay. There you, go. you can't really fall. It's just, you know, it's attached by like 14 wires. Yeah. Hmm. I think you're going to have to turn it upside down so you can. Mm hmm. Challenge accepted. <laughs> what? And not turn it upside down? No, I got to do one more zip tie here, I think. I see where my, my flaw is. Would you mind holding that again, camera crew, on the tail once you get focus figured? Yep. We are going to tie one more tie point here. And I think that's going to get us what we need. Because this has to be between these two lobes of foam. Lobes. 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 Hmm. You suppose that's right? Nope. Dang it. Lobes. That's a weird word. Okay, let go. Okay. So guys, if you're longing to purchase this plane after watching this wonderful assembly, it's actually really not atypical. Nope. We're just kind of spoiled lately with a bunch of really like super Ridiculously easy Ridiculously easy stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, dang it. Come on, you're so close there. You know you want to get in the hole. Go to your home! Oh, it's so close. so close. You see that seam? You see that seam? It's so close, but that's what happens when you have two wires that aren't all the way down in there. You see? Yep. So i got to try to figure out a way to... Okay, maybe if I just go upside down. Did you suggest that earlier? I think, I think somebody said that earlier. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember hearing it. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it between the lobes now. You're going to just stick with that, aren't you? I am the lobes. Get in there. Get between the lobes. 
Oh yeah, buddy. I feel like it's right, but it's if it's if it's right, I feel like it should be falling down there better. You know, I think we're good. I think we're as good as we're gonna be. So now it's time for some screw action. Oh yeah, buddy. There's four of these. I mean, they gave us like 16, so mm -hmm. you know, if you yeah, wanted to right. replace the wings six times, you should be good. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this goes. To be honest with you, this model is an older Dyna model. It's been around for a long time and I just love the Grand Cruiser. I'm super excited to see it fly. I wanna see how the flaps work. And I've been wanting this plane for years, mm -hmm. legitimately. And it's kind of funny because some of these planes you see them for years and you want them, and then you get them, and they're everything you thought they would be and more. And then other times, they're not. I don't ever judge a plane by how horrible it is to put together, though. Nope. That's just part of it. Like that 737 Max, horrible to put together. Just like the yep. Airbus A33600, horrible project. Hated it so much. But you know what? Beautiful plane. A380 or A33600, beautiful plane, gorgeous, but horrible assembly. That PT17, horrible assembly, but really nice plane. Okay. You gotta put some decals on. Oh, I'm gonna put some. Okay. I'm gonna stick them right where they deserve to be. But that wire sticking up into the hole. Mm-hmm. Not quite what I was hoping for. So what I gotta do now is I have to probably see if I can get the transmitter or the wire rather for the battery routed in there as it needs to be. Cause if it's not gonna fit, I may need to resituate things. But honestly, look how nice the wires look. Yeah. It's almost like we planned it out that way. Mm -hmm. Man, and those wires, there's also a linkage that goes back, Jeez. That's a very unfortunate place to have a linkage. Oh, look where the wire is, camera crew. <laughs> well, what did you do that for? Because I wanted to make life exciting. Oh. Other ways to do that. Yeah, true. Oh, okay, so that's on. Throttle cut is not on because there isn't one. That's going to be interesting to load the battery. Hey, you just got to roll it over and stick it in. It's not that big a deal. The elevator is now hooked up. Oh yeah, buddy. Cool. Oh, auto leveling. <laughs> yep. What am I hitting? Oh, right there. The edge. Do you see that? Yeah, Show them like the edge. A little... little bit of foam that needs yeah. to be relieved. Mm -hmm. So this is the auto leveling, trying to find level. Okay. So this would be kind of similar to safe, but it's not safe. It's uh, Detrim or Dynam's style. The way you can tell if you're in auto leveling, when you're halfway, it finds the quickest route to level and then the ailerons will level when you get level. Same thing with the elevator. See the elevator trying to bring it level. Once it's level, it stops. Okay. Okay, cool. I don't know that the rudder, the rudder just does stabilization. So you can see it kind of going up when I go up and down when I go down. Okay. You're gonna have to have it super focused to do that. I mean, we have a uh, pilot 2200 milliamp mm -hmm. hour. Uh, he, it's a smart pilot at least. I mean, thank goodness. Otherwise, uh, you don't want a dumb pilot. Okay, so that's the stabilization only. Elevator up, down, roll left, roll right. Rudder needs to be reversed. Rudder left, rudder right, rudder left, right. Okay, awesome. Elevator up, down, roll. Awesome. Now, when you're in full safe, I don't see, or not safe rather, but uh, auto leveling. And then no stabilization whatsoever. 
In this mode, just gonna do this carefully so I don't get cut. See, nothing happens to the control surfaces. They stay put. Stabilization. As I move, you see that rudder, how it points at you, points away from you, points at you. Elevator goes up, elevator goes down. Can you even see that? It's so hard to I see. I tried it desperately to show this, but we have to be plugged in all these stupid lapel mics for people that complained about our volume. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this and you're gonna follow it. You gotta go quicker. See how it moves? See how it moves? I don't know if you guys can tell. I don't know if you can tell. You're gonna have to actually point it at the thing. I know, but I don't know where you're going. I'm going down and then up. Okay, that's not gonna work. Never mind. I can sit here and hold it and I can turn in a circle and I can see the rudder go like this. Yeah. It's resisting the environmental impact. Same is true for the ailerons. Maybe you can see the ailerons. See the aileron? It's gonna go up when I lift the wing. See? Yeah, that you can down, see a little bit. Yes. Up. That you can see. Down. Yeah. Okay. So if it goes, if you lower the wing and it goes up, that means it's going to induce a roll and you're gonna crash. So you always have to check this when you have a plane hooked up for the first time. Sweet. Is the steerable nose gear going correct? Because you couldn't. If about it's it. going the correct direction with the output of the rudder, then it's gonna be fine. So we can test it here real quick. Flaps, flaps, take off flaps, landing flaps, awesome. Take off flaps, landing flaps, awesome. Oh, that looks so cool. Okay, so that is, that is a pretty decent amount of power just to get going. So I, I wouldn't say that we're probably gonna be worried about having any powerhouse issues here. Okay, my hand is free of the props and I'm just gonna te test for vert vertical power. Not, I would say it's just under one to one. So it's gonna fly good. It'll look like a scale flight. So it'd be cool if you could get in a 4S on this thing and it probably, it's not saying that it's designed for it. Now let's check gear. Ow. That looks so much cooler with the gear collapsed. Gorgeous. Really cool. I'm just, we're gonna have to put a pilot picture on our battery or something. <laughs> Cause I mean, if they would have just left the windows dirty, I think we would have been okay. Yeah. All right, good. camera crew, we doing decals or what? I think we do decals. Let's do decals. Okay. <laughs> what? She's, she's so excited to do decals. All right, so in order to do this, the decals, I wanna have the gear up because it might make it a little easier to manipulate the plane. Yeah. Obviously I am gonna, oh, we need to check CG. Oh yeah, while you're all Let's plugged check in. CG while we're all plugged in. Okay. 55 to 65 millimeters. Now this plane, you're gonna hang upside down like this. So you wanna mark the top of the wing probably. So 55 to 60, I'm gonna put the. You can check CG with gear up or gear down. Why don't we just check with gear up? Hey, wait. What? Did you tighten all the screws on the wing? Cause it's like gapping. It was gapping on. Where? Right there where your thumb is when you picked it up. Yeah, that's cause the thing bends, but I can try to tighten them a little bit more. It's squishing the foam, hon. Okay. I think it's just the nature of the foam. It's pretty soft. Okay. Yeah, it it's tight. It's abnormal. Well, you're not going to typically be lifting by the wing root and not the outboard portion. And it's all going to be, you know, the forces applied are going to be all together. Okay. Okay. So the flaps are on, you know what I really, this is normally where I'd have flaps on my planes mm -hmm. and this is where gear is, but I guess the flaps are just going to be over here because when I'm flying, I normally don't need to do anything with this switch. So that's fine. We'll just leave them like that. Um, what were we checking on? Your, uh, CG. The CG. So we need our wonderful world's cheapest calipers. 
And then we need to make a mark and we'll probably just do a ding style mark. So we need to be 60, 55 to 65 back from the, oh good, yeah, the wing's easy on this one. Okay, so 55 to 65 back. So here's 55. And then 65. Well, it seems like a huge deviation, but it's really not a big difference. See? So this will be the back mark. This will be the 65. Okay. And then I'm going to go to 55. And here's 55. Okay. So you guys can see there's just a little detent there now. So with a 2200 3S Smart Pack, gear up. Oh yeah, we're just right there. Mm. Also, I'm noticing an asymmetry in the flaps. That's definitely not a good thing. Do you wanna show the people at home what I'm talking about? Line up the camera right here and they'll see that one is deployed a little bit more than the other. Actually, those look like they maybe are pretty close there. Huh, maybe they're not. See, because all you have to do is loosen this screw here and then you can adjust the rod here and that'll get your asymmetry worked out. Actually, I felt like that moved a little bit for me. So let's see. That looks close. That's probably close enough. It looks close. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the CG marked. We know that with a 2200, we're gonna be approximately where we need to be. So now at this point, we need to go ahead and pull the battery out. So, you know, what's interesting is in both of the dynamics that we've done recently, the CG has been like pretty much perfect immediately, which is not always the case. Well, the first dyna we did was a ready to fly. So they provided the battery and told you where to put it. So. It should be pretty close, but yeah, you're right. I mean, that's definitely true. We've had planes that are not, mm -hmm. like badly not. Okay, so now we need to put stickers on and uh, let's pause, we'll get things cleaned up. Okay, so we're gonna start with 24 because I like the way it looks and we're, we're not gonna do all these decals because I think some of them are kind of ugly and uh, that's just a preference issue on my part. Some of them are beautiful and some are not. And so I'm just gonna kind of pick one sort of livery that looks good together, I think. And that's what I'm gonna do. And of course, we're gonna have to score that with an X-Acto knife and drop that down in there. So we'll do that on both sides. That's 24. Was there two of those? Yeah, it's in the upper yep. right hand corner. It's actually 25, I think, for this one. Okay, so this is, that looks identical actually. It does. Why would it be identical? It should be opposite. Yeah, unless. Oh wait, flip it yep. upside down. Good call camera crew. Like a pancake, no. Woo! I'm glad sometimes my, my camera crew who doesn't know much about airplanes comes through on stuff like that because she's helpful like that. She may not be an aviation expert, but she's an expert in common sense. <laughs> Never, Never mind. Then, all right, I like the big long swoopy thing, That'll be which fun. is 17. Oh, batteries are getting done. Okay, so it looks like the skinny end goes to the back. And yeah, I agree. there's a darker blue and a lighter blue. And I don't know which one's supposed to be up and which one's supposed to be down. It does not really designate. What is our- I think the lighter blue, judging on the, by the picture. Okay. I think the lighter blue goes up. 
Lighter blue goes up. So which one am I pulling off right now? Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with you there. So this one's gonna go this side. This side. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick that right there for now. Some of these long decals are really challenging to get on, but they are nice looking. That goes all the way to the tip. This is where you can really make your mark and do as nice a job as you want, or you can just slap them on there and get on with it. And it just depends on your personal taste and then how well the decals were made. <laughs> Because sometimes they, sometimes they work pretty good and other times they don't. And this is where you kind of run into problems because if you look at the drawing or if you look at the picture, it does look like that goes all the way, but I don't know how the heck you would attach that because there's nowhere to attach it. Okay. It's, probably... it's okay. It's all right. I think we're good. Oh, and just so you guys know, we're gonna fly this plane on 2200 3S. We're gonna try it on 3200 3S as well. And then we're also gonna try on 4000 3S as well. And so we're gonna just do, we're just gonna do it up like crazy and see if we can get it. I think the CG is gonna get pretty far out of whack on the bigger packs. And so we're just, uh, we're hopeful that we're gonna have good luck with a few different sizes just, it's gonna give us a little more variety. And uh, a little bit more nose heavy is okay, but a little bit more tail heavy probably wouldn't be so much okay. I felt like it was pretty much spot on with a 2200 3S. All right, I'm gonna have to spin that around, aren't I? Do you want me to turn it around? No. Okay. Okay, so the skinny end went to the tail. Yes. Okay. I felt like I, Every time you get a gigantic decal like this, I try to overthink the crap out of it and then I end up screwing them up. So I'm just gonna kinda do my best. This is where it falls off the counter into a million pieces. Okay. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say the light one went up or down? Up. Up, okay. So I did it right. Okay, so I'm just kinda trying to get it positioned underneath the window. And then there's a little bit of a break here. That's, that break is supposed to jump up over the top of the tail. And then I'm just using it to jump all the way down there, okay. See how there's a gap there? I just need to make sure the rudder doesn't interfere with that at all. And we need to cut that too. Camera crew, don't let me forget. May I grab the exact one? Yes. Well, nah, just film. Okay. Film this amazing installation. Actually, those pinstripes alone make such a big make impact. A big I agree. I mean, if I start throwing like dynam stickers all over this, I think it's just gonna not be a good look. Even though it's a dynam plane and I'm proud of that and everything, I think we want the ones on the side here. Yeah, because I think you need something to help differentiate top and bottom. I agree. I agree, camera crew. I had to start one of my batteries. Careful. Okay, so. I'm going to cut it right here. Ooh, that was a lot harder to cut than I thought it was going to be. Okay. All right, so now what's next? We got to do... Are you going to do the ones on the pylons? Yeah. Yeah, I think we are. Let's do that. 
Yeah, these ones are pylons. Oh, that one. I don't know which one's which. Oh, but wait, there's three of them. No, there's four. So do they go... Whoa. Top and bottom? bottom? I don't know. Oh, well, there's 13, 20. Yeah, they go on the bottom and top. So this one's 23. So 23 and 21 goes over on the left wing pylon. Looks like, oh, it's so hard to tell, the drawing does not indicate well. Okay, so this goes on the front. And then I think the best way to do it would be to locate the seam, something like this, probably. Kind of find the mid midpoint there. There's gonna be a gap there's going to be a gap. Except that doesn't seem to line up the way I'm wanting it to. No. Was that close? I think you're right now. Okay. Yeah, that's better. It's pretty easy to reposition these though. Some of these yeah. planes, you stick them down and they pull paint off. There's no paint to pull off on this one. So this is pretty easy. I don't know if these things are going to stick or if they're going to buzz. I'm a little bit concerned about the buzziness. Mm. I like the way that looks though. Yeah. That, that looks good. Yep. Okay, so now 20 and 22 go over on this other side. So I'll grab 20 and then try to do the top. Okay. It could be the bottom one. I don't know. It's so hard to tell from the drawing. See, yep, that one's the bottom. So in this case, I got to rotate the plane. And then I need to go like that? Mm, I think so. Whoa, there's a big old bump right there. I was able to squish it with my thumb and get it to... I don't think that's right. Well, I mean, it is right, but it'll have to do. It's, it's not going to be super critical. Okay, good enough. I, I agree with your differentiation between upside down and right side up. Yeah. I think that was a good call. So we're going to stick these on the top. Should we come back from this or what do you think, camera crew? I always, I always feel like if we don't film something, then it's like cheating. <laughs> but this is such a kind of a tedious thing that everybody can kind of do to their own taste. Well, I think it depends on how many more you're going to do. Yeah, that's true. Why don't we just do the ones that we like, and then if we have to add one or two off, off camera later, it's not a big deal. They are going on okay. We're still getting a little bit of buckling, but partly because I'm trying to get this done before midnight. Are you gonna do the ones on the side of the... I gotta do the bottom of the other pylon first. I know, but I was just going to start looking ahead. Oh, yeah. Like on the um, side of the, like the motors. You mean on the nacelles? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the nacelles. I think that would be a good one to do. That would look good. These are nice decals. They're really easy to put on. They're easy to reposition. Sometimes they're not like that. So I would definitely give the, the decals a good ranking. And we had real good luck on the PT-17 with the decals mm -hmm. too. So I don't think anything's changed. I do think that these are going to have a tendency of wanting to uh, buzz in the wind and there'll be a few that end up getting peeled back a little bit. I really like the long run. Yeah. I think we got to do the nacelles. We got to, the side nacelle ones. So it looks like we've got number three and number four. Right so there. number three and number four. So number three and number four. So number four is on that side, okay? And on... Hold on. So this one, we gotta know which way this goes. So it looks like the light color goes up. No. Yeah. Light is down. Mm. Really? Yeah. Why don't you look at this with me? I think they did it wrong. Well, that's fine. It's your plane. You can do whatever you want. Really? Just put a happy little stripe anywhere. Okay. 
We'll do that because that matches the count. I think it should match the way the other ones go. I think it so should too. I agree with your placement. Okay. All right. Good. Just saying the picture is backwards. I'm actually really liking the way that they look now. Yeah. I'm just not going to be into like having Grand Cruiser stickers all over it, I don't think. Because it might be fine to have one or two of those, but I don't want them like everywhere. Is, is the Grand Cruiser an actual plane? I don't know. I think it's actually something else. But mm. the Grand Cruiser, it sounds right though. I thought it was like the 310, but I could be mistaken. Again, there's copyright things that come into play. Mm, true. That looks good. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. It looks cool. And I feel like it's not like overdone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're just super overdone with all the stickers. Okay, so now the top ones that go over the top of the nacelles, I'm just not sure if those are over the top or if they're gonna look good. I could take them off if they look bad. That's true. I don't think they're gonna look bad because they still match the same color scheme. The red, I yeah. just don't really get the red. I don't think that's a good look. I feel like it, it just changes too much. It's a bridge too far. So this one is 15. So 15 is supposed to be on the near side. Okay. This one's gonna be kind of a Bearcat to install because it wants to keep separating on me. That is supposed to go back mm -hmm. a ways. So I'm actually gonna just try this here, a little bit off center toward the center of the aircraft because otherwise it's not gonna line up well. Okay, so that looks decent. That might be why you put the dark up because of the dark would kind of oh. continue, but I don't, I don't think we so did anything wrong. put on their picture either, so. I'm not sure if that's the right move or I, not. I think it's okay. Otherwise you kind of have like a big white space of nothing on the wing. Yeah, but there's a lot of big white spaces with nothing on the wings, on real wings. Hmm. That's true. Just kind of depends on the plane, I guess. Yeah. But like I said, as long as it matches the same scheme. Oh, there's two more smaller ones that look like they're the kind I like. So I want to do those. What numbers are those? Are those the inside of the nacelles maybe? Oh crap, gotta get that the same. I don't know where those go. Maybe they're the bottom side? That would be good if there was because it would really help because the bottom of this plane is gonna be really white. Yes it is. Which is okay if the sky is the right color. If you get a day like we had the other day, they just disappear. Yeah, sometimes planes do disappear. Those are going to be, man, where are they? What numbers are they? Number 26 and 25. I don't see 26 and 25 anywhere on there. I see 24, I see 27. 27 is, I don't think we're gonna use those. That's 27 and 26. 27, 26. I don't see it, camera crew, come around here. I see 27 there, but 27 is speaking to a Dynam sticker, I think. See, cause that's, that's our 27 right there. 26, right here. On oh, the it goes other under. Side of the wing. Oh, it goes on the oh. little, oh, okay, yeah, the fin. It, it goes on the fin, the vertical fin, vertical stabilizer, it's on the bottom. Well, it's like right under the wing here. Look, all the oh. way to the back. Okay. Fair enough. So, I can, so this right one's, on this, flat. this one needs to be on this side so that yep. the light goes up. Yep. Well, actually, hold on. <sighs> would that fit on there? Cause I think that would look cool. Cause we've got control surfaces coming out there. I don't think it's going to fit very good. Otherwise, I think I'm going to throw it right here, right here. I think it'll fit. That'd be really cool if it did. Or maybe, will it fit this way? I think so. Oh, cool. That's where it's going. That's where it's going, guys. I don't even think that's right, but that's where I'm putting it. 
cool. I really like the way that it looks with these decals. I just don't know if I want the big splash of red. I think it's gonna make it look weird. And then the Dynam stickers actually look pretty sharp. These Dynam stickers, the round ones. So I'm gonna put those on. I just don't know where. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna do those in the back or if I'll do them up front. Is that the way I did the other side there? Uh, yeah, it's pretty close. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh no, got a big old seam in there. Dang it. That's super annoying. Wonder how hard it would be to pull it off of there. Okay, so let's talk about on the bottom of the plane, okay? So on the bottom of this plane, so there's no, there's no, it could say Grand Cruiser, I think you should put one Grand Cruiser one on. Okay, like let's the... let's pause and find a picture of a Grand Cruiser and then we'll come right back. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay, so on a completely unrelated note, we happen to be searching for pictures of similar looking planes, such as the Cessna 310. Um, and as expected, um, we got lots of interesting ideas on how to make this look good. Now this, I think honestly, I like the way Dynam looks and I like it right there and that's where it's going. Okay. Cause it just breaks up the big white space. And this is the Grand Cruiser by Dynam, but it looks an awful like other planes, like maybe a Cessna 310. I'm just saying. That's why I was not answering your question earlier. <laughs> so now that's done and I was really tempted to put some de-icing bags on the front or the heaters, the black heaters on the front. This plane, this plane's light actually. That's good, I like that. Uh, light planes typically light on their feet. They don't need a ton of power to fly. This turns into an everyday flyer and I like that. That's cool, that's really cool. The glue is really working well. The wing does not feel overly super stout though. I can say that for sure. Oh, you were supposed to warn me, camera crew. What? I got this one on like way further back. Oh. I'm going to try to match them because they look goofy right now. Other than that, I'm just kind of at this point toying with the idea of adding any sort of stickers that we would normally not add to the top, maybe to the bottom just to differentiate it but it's so busy on the bottom with like the landing gear open and all that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if maybe it's sort of like peeing in the wind. You just try and avoid that. It's not a good idea, I've heard. So I can't wait to fly this thing, guys. If you haven't seen the flight yet, that means you skip the beginning to go to the build. Don't go back. Go back, watch, watch the, flight. the flight. It's at the beginning. I'm sure the flight's actually gonna be really good on this plane. I'm excited to share it with you. We really appreciate you guys coming around for these things. This is a great little plane. It's kind of, you know, it's a little bit of work to put them together, but where it makes up for is that they're quite a bit cheaper and they're still good planes and they have decent electronics in them. And I'm really excited to see this thing fly. Like I said, I've been wanting this thing for years and I have a ton of planes, but the general aviation planes are right up my alley. So I can't wait to share it with you and I know it's gonna fly great. So you've already seen it. If you're still waiting, check the link in the description below. Check it out, see if you like it. Um, we'll link to the different finish levels, the ready to fly, the, the bind and play, and then the plug and play, also known as bind and fly and plug and fly. So if you wanna use your own receiver, that's fine. They're quite a bit cheaper that way. But if you don't have anything and you wanna get a, a place to start, this is not a bad place to start because this is not like a crazy performance plane, but it has everything you need, including the chargers, including the transmitter, and it does have auto leveling. So yes, you could technically learn to fly on something like this. This may not be the absolute easiest plane to fly, but I don't think it's gonna be the hardest plane to fly either. And it's gonna hold up to some wear and tear. You're not gonna be able to crash into the side of your house and keep flying. But the thing is, it is definitely going to be easier to fly than some planes. So I will give you my final verdict at the beginning of the video and you've already seen it, but this thing looks great 
and it looks like it's gonna fly great. I can't wait to fly it for you guys. Come back for more. We have literally thousands of videos. If you're looking for a plane for a Christmas idea or for a gift for yourself, look on our channel. Follow the links in the description below and you will help to support the channel. If you like what you see and you'd like to see more of it, then just look through the playlist. We organize all of our playlists so that you can find what planes you want and you can figure out what the progression was or the digression depending on what plane it is. We have some where we've done tons of modifications and we have others where we have just opened them, flown them, and then immediately moved on. So it just depends. Some of them we got like 50, 60 videos on. So come back for more. Thanks for watching guys. Battery and come right back. Okay, so we're gonna test the voltage. Landing gear looked good after that bouncy landing. This battery is, it's got an IC3 on it and it's plugged into the XT60, which this happens to be an XT60-M. It's dash XT60H-M. I don't know what that means. I think it's just different brand. Pack is warm, but not puffed. As you guys know, I have a bit of an affinity for these smart batteries. Whoops. 25% left guys, 23% left. We're at 3.75. So we're right at the perfect, perfect storage level. So this is a significantly larger, this is a 4,003S. Uh, it's quite a bit bigger. And I just wanna show you that it, you can get them in there, but you gotta do a little bit of pushing. You gotta really cram it in there. Okay, so look at the way this hooks up. You'll notice that I'm on a plane stand, people. Okay, IC3. The thing that's nice about this plane, guys, is that it will not initiate this, this, the auto leveling upside down as do some competitive brands like Verizon Bobby. So if you have a Verizon Bobby plane, it waits to initiate on the newer ones, on the older ones, you turn safe on and it crashes because it attempts to flip the plane upside down. That being understood, this is the first thing you're gonna do. Go to your auto leveling, flip it over, yep. And then when it's level, do they go neutral? Yes, they do. So that means we're good. Okay, so the other thing is I was talking about high and low rates. I'm in the high rate. The only thing I wish I had a little bit more was on the rudder. And the way you could get more would be to move this control horn out, okay? So this would be moved out to there. And if you could move this out to there, to the, to the inside hole, instead of the outside hole, you would get more rudder output. And that would help a little bit with coordinating the turns. This heavier pack, let's show the people what it looks like with the CG marks. Of course, we talk about this in the build. So stick around if you wanna see the build. This was a frustrating build, just like most bind and fly, plug and fly configurations that you have to do any gluing. Feels like it's a little closer to the front instead of the center. The 2200 makes it CG out perfect, but I feel like the CG that they report is maybe a little bit off. So I want it to be a little heavier on the nose. So we're gonna go right back to it. My camera crew's hands are cold, so she is gonna grin and bear it as we fly in the freezing cold. Let's do some taxi so you can be out of the wind, okay? So this plane on a 4003S 30C Smart Pack is gonna do really well. I'm gonna get back out of the auto leveling, show you some taxiing. Let's show you some grass actually. Grass behavior. It'll do some grass, but these Dynam retracts don't have an amazing reliability record. And there you go. So you gotta be careful about hitting bumps. I would say that we're probably okay to take off from grass with this plane if your grass is well manicured. And go ahead and dial in your takeoff flaps if you're gonna do that. Feels like you could use just a little bit better ground handling Unlike it's more sophisticated and newer, Big Brother, the PT-17 that we reviewed just recently, which has amazing ground handling. This one has a little bit more hokey ground handling. Look at that roll. Amazing gear going up into the sunset. Gorgeous. About 30% to 50% throttle there. Just keeping the, keeping the wind under our wings here. Coordinating the turn with full rudder almost. Excuse me, about half rudder. Look how slow that thing will slow down. Gorgeous, totally gorgeous. 
<laughs> thing is so close to the ground. All right, guys, we are still in the flaps, by the way. Okay, so coming down the runway here. Okay, we're out of the flaps altogether. Just loving the way that this thing flies. The only thing I wish I could get that I don't have is just that little teeny bit more rudder authority, which would resolve most of my concerns. Let's go ahead and come out of the stabilization. Okay, we're out of the stabilizer. Much more touchy, which is good for coordinating the turns because then the rudder is not being counteracted by the stabilizer quite as much. And yes, that plane will roll with rudder. So see, it's yawing. It's actually yawing pretty flat. I think I might've been hitting wind too. See how it yaws somewhat flat? Okay, so we're back into stabilized. You can see the oscillation there on the elevator. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Something's vibrating. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny. Oh, you know what it could be? Hmm. You know, I keep complaining about the rudder. Let's land and check something. Okay, so here come the gear. Let's do a no flap landing here. Just to show the people it can be done. Okay, very, very easy landing. Okay, so let's see. The rudder is definitely moving, but you see what's happening? It moves this way, but it's not wanting to go back that way. You hear that? Mm -hmm. It's getting caught on something. It's getting caught on something. Is it getting caught on that decal down there? I think it's getting caught on the stupid decal there. I'm just gonna squish that and see if that resolves that issue right now. That'd be awesome. That would help with coordinating the turns. Oh, so much better. Okay. Here we go. Take off flaps here. Going into the wind directly. We're gonna go kinda, look how easy that thing gets off the ground. It's just incredibly fast. Gear going up. Beautiful sunset there. Still into the flaps there on the takeoff setting. Oh man, the programmable radio would make this flap action so much better. Could do that delay. Knowing where the switches are would make a big improvement too in the flyability. From my perspective, just with my personal habits. Gosh, I don't even think I had to trim anything but the elevator. This pilot looks like he's even more of a square than the first one. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. What do you think of the look of it, camera crew? It looks really cool. I just did a little bit more down trim just to see if I could get it to behave a little bit more flat. And to be honest with you, it's, it's flying plenty flat now. The 4,000 seems to be a better size match for this than that 2,000. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it's got some ups, but you're not gonna be doing like lots of amazing tricks and things. And yes, I'm strolling around with the flaps on. I should probably turn those off. Okay, so the flaps are off now. So we'll just see if we can do a loop. Yeah, it'll, it'll do a loop. But you gotta kinda get on it. Okay, this will be a tailwind pass here. Lots of oscillation with the tailwind. I need you on my right, please. Over to the side that you normally go to, please. Thank you. That's perfect. That. I don't know. Let's find out.
Okay, we'll go see what happened. Okay. This will be fun. Let's see if we can retract the gear. Okay, so the gear retracted. I think the camera crew and I are in agreement on what happened there. I think one of the props stopped spinning mm -hmm. under power. Yep. Uh, looks like I can go around behind this dogwood. Where you landed might have not been horrible though. No. Compared to other options. No, I think it did all right actually. Crash landing. For a crash landing. I was not able to get the thing to turn mm -mm. because the yaw rate was so low and the wind was strong enough. I'm gonna stop talking in case I can't pick up the mic. I cannot see, so that might be a good idea. Okay, so what happened? Let's see. Oh, it looks like the landing gear got bent. Mm. Let's open those things quick. Okay. So that just, that just gets bent back and then closed. All right. Okay. So that's unfortunate. Just a big scuff right there where it hit. Okay, there's that. Feels pretty weak right there. Yeah. That's good, that's good. Like it's not broken in half. No. So. Let's put the gear down and go to a flat spot here. We can pause it while we walk. Okay. All right, guys, so elevator, ailerons, rudder. Let's see if the gear will go. Yeah, gear are fine. And then the flaps were clear, right? Yeah. Okay, so none of those are bound. So now I'm gonna check the throttle, which is where I think our problem is. Ah. See that? Yep. Do you hear it beeping at me? Mm -hmm. That would do it. Hear it beeping? Yep. So that's basically what happened to this plane. I don't know if we got a bad ESC or a bad motor or some combination therein. It does look like the prop shaft is reasonably straight still. Let's show them from this side, right here. Okay, careful, I'm gonna run the prop a little bit. Okay, okay so it's not gonna spin very good. So basically, something something's not happy, and I'm not sure why, but pretty fortunate crash, to be honest. We got lucky, a little bit of damage here on that hinge, on that pinch hinge. So that can be easily fixed with a piece of tape on either side, right about there. And then that'll be resolved. And then the rudder that we had discussed, looks like it's moving pretty free mm -hmm. now. So um, it's always a bummer to end on that type of a note, but this is what happens when you do radio controlled airplanes. So I don't know if you guys could tell that from the video, but obviously I was trying to yaw it back to us and the wind was strong enough and we were getting a lot of lift from the hill and the tree line. And so I, I didn't have enough height to go up and over the tree line so that I could do a left-hand turn, which I could have accomplished. And so my hope was to get enough speed so that I could do a right-hand turn and correct over toward the runway and then just put it down. But you could see what happened as I got into a unrecoverable stall as I was trying to start that turn process and I just didn't have enough. So as a result, the wind caught me and killed it. And that's because this motor stopped working, whether it's the ESC or the motor, I'm not sure, but it obviously stopped working. I thought maybe the prop, like the actual propeller dislodged from the bolt, but it feels to be pretty attached still. So I don't like to have to go through a blow by blow of a crash, especially not on a maiden like this, especially on a plane that I've been wanting for so long. But honestly, you know, we want you guys to see what we deal with. And uh, 
this is still, I would say this is honestly a good plane. I don't know if I got a bad one or if this is a symptom on the Grand Cruiser. Um, so if you're really wanting it to survive, I suppose, do your due diligence, make sure the motors are running, but I thought I did too. Uh, the other thing is let's talk about, let's talk about the battery. Obviously the battery is, is good, but let's verify that. It's been neutral for this whole time. And yes, the gear were down because I was trying to bring it in for a landing. Cause I don't know if you could hear me address the camera crew, but I said, let's go ahead and find out. Mm -hmm. And that that's when I deployed the landing gear and got ready to try to do a landing. Um, of course, at that point, we're in a position where we were kind of hamstrung. So this is how real planes crash, by the way. Same thing happens to them. You get into a situation that's unrecoverable. Okay, so we're just gonna check this. Oh yeah, we had plenty of power left. Mm -hmm. Cells are well balanced. Down to the third decimal, that's pretty awesome. So we had plenty of power. I did feel like this battery was better on power, but it did make uh, for an overall heavier plane. So that may have contributed somewhat, I kind of doubt it. Um, I think this plane could actually handle an even bigger battery, but I wonder how it would do on a bigger power system and a 4S configuration would be pretty cool. And then obviously differential thrust would really help with that yaw. Um, also moving the control surface in so that, this didn't break, did it? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think it broke. Like it just felt kind of loose when I was wiggling it. Let's test. I don't think it broke. Oh, look, it's, there's a glue joint there. So it feels a little bit delaminated there. So we're gonna have to probably put a little bit of glue in here in that seam there and then just tape right like that. And that'll resolve that problem. But otherwise I would say we were fairly fortunate with that. Um, any other things we could learn from this situation? I mean, it's a cool plane that looks really nice. So I'm it is really beautiful. Sure what else, and I don't really know what else we could have done in that situation. No, I don't think it was a pilot error in that no. case. I've, I've made plenty of bad landings and crashed plenty of planes no, we by both, pilot error. I think that was just a legitimate failure. Yeah. So we both it, heard it at the same time. So I don't, it's not like there was. Yeah, it was pretty distinct. Mm -hmm. We could, we could tell there was a difference. Um, I'm actually kind of curious to see um, what, what happens when we look at this. So let's just look at it right now. Let's just see what we can see. Okay. I doubt we're going to see anything. It sounded like an ESC failure to me. Now we glued this, this little piece on. So, and if you want to watch the build video, I promise you guys, I'm not trying to talk you out of this plane because I actually really like it still. I'm just a little disappointed right at the moment. Uh, see, that's not going to come off very easy, is it now? But what I can do is I can screw that off fairly easy with a Phillips screwdriver, the one that came with it, no less. Yeah. And then we need the crescent wrench to undo the nut. Mm. Okay. So let's see if we can do this real quick. So we're just gonna undo the spinner. Make a little puddle of screws. We try to review what happens with crashes so you guys can get an idea of how horrible it was. Sometimes the planes are pretty much not worth fixing and this one's just like barely broken. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, from where it fell, that was pretty incredible. We got pretty lucky that it landed in the tree the way that it did. I've been more lucky on other landings. I, if I would have had the gear retracted and I would have just come in and flew it to the ground, it would have been fine. Okay, so we've got this. This is totally undamaged. It looks fine. So we'll just undo this so we can get to the next layer. The nylock is held on nice and tight. Of course, the nylock is um, into the nylon, so it's actually holding on the shaft, the prop shaft. I'm just going to pull that off. One little nylock, a couple of washers. I don't know if that's exactly right, but it doesn't matter. And then, of course, the spinner adapter. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to very carefully try to pull this off. The glue is definitely glued, but I want to try to get it off of there. Okay, so it's coming off. It's just coming off slow. 
If you want to undo that more appropriately, you can actually use kicker to break down your glue. And that kicker will allow you to delaminate the glue without any sort of side effects or damage. But then you have to dry it off really good before you try to re-adhere your glue. Okay. You can see we just, we're good there. So that'll go back on without any problems. I can't see any immediate signs of damage there. Let me show them. So that's the Detrum or the Detrum BM2815 A3, which is 1100 kV, not a super powerful motor given the size of this plane. And then underneath, it's really easy to get at it. Mm -hmm. That's because this is a magnetically attached access hatch, which is really cool. But then we can just look. Ooh, look. See that? You see what happened? Yeah. The wire came dislodged. See that, guys? I can see that, but I can see it. Here, watch. I'm going to take a screwdriver, and I'll just move that. Yep. It came Four undone. So I'm just gonna lift up this heat shrink so that you guys can see. Show them from this angle. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so watch how easy this is to fix. I'm gonna use needle nose pliers because it'll be super easy to get in there then. I'm gonna grab the blue wire. I'm gonna grab that and slide it in. Actually a little bit challenging to make sure that I have hold of it and I'm lined up properly because I can't see it. Try this again. Okay. I'm going to air on the safe side here and cut away the heat shrink in this spot. And just use the exacto knife to do that. I'm going to come in here with the scissors that are dirty. Okay, look at this, guys. Look at this. It didn't come undone. It came unsoldered. See? That's this oh. right there. See that? Yep. Cold soldered. What's going on? Well, I'm zoomed. Get in there. You see that, guys? That's what we call a cold solder joint. Under the right conditions, the, the pressure from the heat shrink would have held that down. I could probably go solder that back on and it would be fine. And then these ones are held on better. So it's almost like that's glued on there, but that should be uh, soldered on there, okay? See, and that's just the socket that would normally go right on there. That's real disappointing. And under the right circumstances, we could have gotten lucky if that would have held tight enough. Well, we have deciphered the exact problem though. Mm -hmm. The other thing too that's kind of somewhat nice about this is if the fuse were replaced, then it has a lot less going on inside of it than the wing. So an ESC would fix that or I could solder it on and be done and fix it and then I could fly again to see another day. I'm sure it'd be fine. So that's something for you guys to check on yours and just make sure that those things aren't loose. Um, and in my case, it just happened to be the middle lead. I highly doubt it. That is definitely just a fluky sort of thing to happen. Um, you hate to see that, especially on you know, a product that you really want it to be awesome. And to be honest with you, it flies really good. It's probably worth fixing. I'll fix it because I like this plane, but it's a little disappointing. So, but that being said, guys, if you decide you want to roll the dice, I will link to this in the description below. I actually still recommend this plane. It flies really good. Um, we got unlucky, but I kind of doubt you're going to get unlucky. That was just a fluke. And uh, once I get it fixed, like this nose is just barely damaged. I don't even know that I really care that much. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate, but it's not that bad. And then we also discussed the tail, 
which was the vertical stabilizer to be specific. This thing right here feels to be broken there. And I'm not even gonna say that that's broken necessarily, it's just dislodged. And I'm sure it was dislodged by the way that it landed. So I'm gonna just take this glue bottle and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue in there right now. Okay, this stuff happens to be clear so it's actually kinda hard to see, which is a good thing. And then I'm just gonna get a toothpick or two and I'm gonna fix that right now because I want it fixed, because I wanna fly this plane more. I didn't wait years for this plane to have it break like this. Okay, you see that break there? That's an actual genuine break. Okay, so just working that glue down the length of it, all the way up there in that seam. And just kinda, it'd be nice if you could let that glue cook. Um, and you'll understand what I'm talking about if you've ever seen my channel. It's just you, you apply the glue on both sides of the seam and then you just kind of like let it air. And then that stuff will get so tacky that you won't be able to take this apart if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna stuff that down in there. And then I'm gonna take, since I've got that spilled all over the place. Um, yeah, we have one LED light there. So I think I'm safe to just ram it like that okay that's just going to pin the the wing into that configuration and then i'm just going to work the glue on the surface i'm just going to do that one more time right back here okay see all the glue come out mm -hmm. okay and then once you get it to the depth that you think is reasonable in my case i'm going to use two tools to fix this I'm gonna use side cutters, the smaller and um, easier to get close to the end, the better. So I'm just gonna clip those, those tips off. And then I'm gonna use this to push that in the rest of the way. Whoops. Oop, it's not wanting to slip in for me. That's, that's a good sign, that means the glue's working. Mm. So I'm gonna have to use the black screwdriver or some other sort of me uh, mechanism to push that down in there. See, just that's all I'm trying to do is just get it past, past even there. See, now that's in there. So now I'm gonna probably go ahead and use a little bit of tape. And you'll notice the glue is kind of spilled out all over the place. Well, that glue is actually gonna work to our advantage right now because I'm gonna grab a little bit of this tape, this packing tape. I was gonna use this tape, but I'd like to kind of take advantage of that glue that's spilled. I'm just gonna cut that for a clean cut, and cut this for a clean cut, and then lay that down. And I'm just gonna come in here like this, and I'm gonna fold the seam so that it's the sticky side down. I'm gonna drop that into the tape, into the glue, and just let it walk up. Okay, and that's all, that's gonna be super, super strong, guys. Like way stronger than it was from the factory. Okay, I'm gonna trim it right here and fold it and tuck it in. Okay, so that's fixed. What other part was broken? Just the nose here. Mm -hmm. So the, the nose wasn't too bad. On something like this, let's show the people what it's what it amounts to for damage. Why don't you go to the nose? Okay, so you can see the worst part of it is that that um, detail from the decal. Mm -hmm. And so what I hope to accomplish is like really super simple here. I'm actually going to just lift the decal carefully. I'm going to show you how I'll do that. It's really easy. I'm just going to use a piece of tape like this. And I'm going to stick that back to the counter. This decal, I'd rather have it gone probably in this case. I'm just kind of lifting it here. Just make a clean break. Yep. Just get rid of it. Because it's going to be almost impossible to restore that. So I'm just going to trim this down to a point and just be done with it. And then that's going to be gone. 
See, just like that. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect, but I'm not going for perfection here. Still. I'm just going for flyable and still pretty. And I don't like to waste a lot of time on these repairs. Let me pause that. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish this little bit here with a piece of tape that is going to cover up this area that got that little bit of surface damage from the branch that it landed on. And the way I'm gonna do it on my plane, this is not the only way to do it. There's a million ways to skin this cat. I'm gonna lay that down flat so it's got a nice tight uh, bond. And then I'm just gonna score this a couple of times. Whoops, it ripped kind of bad that time. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to make the fold real neat. Okay, probably should have done that with scissors on the first go around. Okay. Okay, so then that's just gonna keep the air from getting caught in there and lifting that up. And then there's just a little bit of a scuff down here too, kind of the same scenario. So we'll just do the same thing with another piece of tape. Half of the fun of flying radio controlled airplanes is fixing them. And I say that facetiously, <laughs> facetiously, you may have noticed. But it's important to know how to fix them because like you always say, if you fly, you're, you're gonna, gonna have crash. to fix them. You're gonna have to fix them. Well, sometimes it's your fault and sometimes it's not, but it doesn't really matter at this point. It's just, I want the plane fixed. And so the way you fix it is you fix it. Yeah. So in this case, I would say that it's pretty obvious what happened and it's pretty annoying, but what are you gonna do? Okay, and I wanna tape the back part first, if possible, so that the overlap will actually not catch the wind at all. Okay. So then that just, it's just basically, this is just to keep the wind from catching that little area and ripping it out. It's not gonna come out on its own, um, except for when you're flying. And this plane doesn't fly exceptionally fast. Right. You have an, the tape overlapped the gear opening underneath that you're gonna need to trim probably. Okay. You guys wanna see what she's talking about right there? And I know you guys already saw me fix the landing gear. You can see that was really, really easy. Mm -hmm. So it's done. All right, so we have the tail fixed. We have the nose, you know, fixed. You could, you could do a million different things to fill that. I've used cotton and CA to fill them, but that does discolor over time. Um, so now let's talk about this ESC. Um, the proper way to fix it would be to replace it. Of course, I'm way too lazy for that. And I got way too much going on to be doing that. So I'm actually gonna cut this little piece of heat shrink out. And I'm gonna expose that so I can see the electronics. Okay. And this is just gonna be a quick surgery and then we'll be done. And then the plane will be flyable and we'll test it with basically the battery we were using when it crashed and just make sure everything is electrically kosher. Okay, so now you can see, oh shoot, I would hope to not rip that, but I did. Um, this just needs to be soldered on there, okay? Very simple. So that needs to solder right there, okay? Should be no problem at all. So that's what we're gonna work to that end next, and we'll pause it while we get the tools out, which is gonna be a soldering iron and some solder. Okay. So we need to fix this elevator before I forget because the elevator separated at this joint. This is the sort of thing that would be easy to forget. The ESC is not gonna be forgotten, not gonna be forgotten. So we're gonna do this real similar to the way we did the other control surface, uh, which was the rudder when we were putting the plane together. And we do show that in detail in the, 
in the unbox and build. So basically I'm just laying this down and I want to fold this so it's kind of a sharp edge. And then you can kind of walk it down into the seam. You see, I can even move the elevator down a little bit. And I need to release the control horn and then get a, an object that can be run down in here. If you're lucky, you can just slide this down in there. See, but it's wanting to kind of fight me getting stuck down in there. The idea is what you want, and I'm gonna, re I'm gonna redo it again. What you really want is you want the elevator to be free if possible. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo this one screw here. Okay, and then that allows me to move this up and down. Okay, so then I can open the joint all the way up. So we don't need a ton of tape, we just need, you know, a few inches worth. Should be pretty straightforward. And you can start on the wing or you can start on the control surfaces, doesn't matter. On the horizontal, horizontal stabilizer, as in the wing. So press that down nice and then walk the edge all the way down until you get to the middle of the control surface. And you see, I'm just working that all the way down into the bottom of the seam, okay? And then I'm gonna grab this thin tool and just kinda, I kinda got a, a big buckle in it right now. Okay, so once you get that buckle released, you can pull it tight. Okay, so then that, that'll basically hold, but uh, I, wanna, I wanna have it completely done so it's totally solid. So we'll just do this other side real quick. Same exact process, just happens to be on the other side. So get a piece of tape about the same, about the same length. This is still free on the, on the surface there, so you can move it up and down manually. And so you just kind of tape this as though it's gonna be centered, but it ends up not being centered. So now I'm gonna walk this down and around the edge, you see, right there, just pushing down tight. And I'm just gonna push down tight and work my way back out. So I'm kind of actually pushing that with the round part of the screwdriver instead of the tip. Because if you push with the tip, you'll cut it, okay? So then we can just push that down nice and tight. This is where you do wanna kind of press hard, get that tape to get a good bond with the, the surface. And then as it moves, you can see it's got good freedom to move. There's a little bit more resistance than just the piece of foam. So that'll hold up for quite some time. Um, there's other methods you can use, but that one just works really nice. It's very easy. And then the same thing when we're out flying, we noticed that this rudder was kind of hitting. And so I'm gonna just push that down a little bit. And then while we're at it, I'm gonna flip over the plane and get the elevator control uh, reseated on the screw. Got a little bit of dirt on there just from the landing. Okay, so we'll just grab this and tighten that real good. It was kind of down like this, so that's I'm trying to mimic the position it was in. We may have a real small trim issue to resolve when we get this ready to hook back up, but we should be okay on that. And then we'll flip it over, and this is the spot I was talking about. It looks like we're pushed down okay now because that decal was actually binding the rudder when it pulled back toward us or when we were trying to induce a right yaw. So I'm actually gonna undo this surface and I'm gonna go to the next hole over instead of the outside hole. Uh, so I'm just gonna, it's actually really pretty close to lined up but not perfectly lined up. I don't know if I actually have to undo that. Just gonna be a bit of a pain to undo this. Okay, so now that's free, so I can move that. Just gonna push the control surface forward. See, 
then that gives me a better angle to get at this. Sorry guys. Okay. Just kind of twisting that by hand. It's always easier to do this stuff before you assemble the plane. But sometimes you find stuff like this and you gotta, you gotta make an adjustment after it's put together. As much as I would like to pretend like this never happens, um, it does happen occasionally. So you're taking the nut off and then you can just lift the whole assembly up and move it over? I can move over to, an, to, the, to the inside, inside hole. hole or the next one over. I, I don't know if the inside hole is definitely warranted. It's just not wanting to spin very easy because I think I put glue on there, which was intentional. I did that because I wanted to make it harder for it to come out on its own. It's coming out. It's just taking a little bit of effort. And that's why I loosened this so I can move this over and get it at an angle where it's easier to grab the side of the nut. See, there we go. So now that's about to pop out. Okay, so we have the nut free from the doohickey. That's what we called it in the build. And we're just gonna go from the outermost hole. I'm just gonna go to the, see the outermost hole is drilled out too. So it's pretty evident mm -hmm. that that hole is gonna be a little bit too small. So we'll have to actually drill that out to be able to get that through. So I will go get a drill and come right back. We'll pop. Okay. Okay. So I'm just looking for a drill bit. That's going to give me, um, big enough, but not lots of slop. Cause if you get lots of slop, you're going to have all sorts of problems. Okay. So that's probably about right. That is five sixty four of an inch in my case. If you have a metric drill bit, you might have an easier middle step. Sometimes it's a little tricky to, to do this when they're mounted in the wing like this, because then you, the propensity is to go through and pierce the other side. So if you run into a situation like that, there's a few different tricks, but you can open up a crescent wrench to give you a place for the bolt or for the drill bit to pass through when you're done drilling. And that also gives you something as a backer so that you can make your, your drill bit press harder. See how nice that worked? Super easy. Now let's see if this fits in here real quick. I might not be big enough. Uh, it's big enough to go through, but I don't know if we're binding yet. I think we might be okay there. Yeah, it's, it's spinning free enough. Yeah, that should be good. So now the process is gonna go like this. I'm gonna slide this. First of all, I'm gonna pull this screw back out just with my fingers, thumb and finger. And then I'm going to slide that into the middle hole now. And then I'm going to grab the nut and I'm going to probably, oh, this is going to be a pain in the, pain in the neck, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to have to spin this somehow and it's going to be really challenging to do so. Um, the other thing I could do is try to put that on the underside, but I don't think that's going to be much easier. The other thing I could do is just try to pull this out, but that thing is really glued in there nicely. What's glued in nicely? I think so. I can push the control horn forward a little bit more maybe. And then I might be able to, cause it's just going to be hard to spin this once it's already in, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think what I'm going to have to do is I'll have to try to start it and then I'll loosen it from, well, oh, but I can't loosen it from in there very easy. I could cut this now that I know how long it needs to be and just make it so that I can just barely get it on there. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Cause we know we're going to be good on length. Okay. Okay. So now that's shorter, which is going to allow us to pass our, our tool through by holding the rudder and then slipping this in. Okay. So that's the whole idea there. 
this is going to be kind of tricky. So I'm going to have to have you give me a little bit of space to get this started here. Okay. So I'm going to hold the nut like this fairly tight. And then I can come in here with the tool or with the doohickey. And I'm going to get this started by spinning it. And I can just use my fingers now. But also, since there's a set screw in there, I can actually use the set screw to torque this in here. See how it's spinning now? Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's a little bit of glue residue on there, so it's not going to back off. It's going to act almost like a nylock. Okay, and we just happen to be so that the hole is lined up now straight. See, now I can just slip that in. I have to back that off just a hair to let it fall in. And then remember, we were just a little teeny bit to the right. Oh, except the, the servo is not centered. So probably the easiest way would be to just plug in the battery, which we'll have to do here in a minute. So I'll just tighten, tighten this down and we'll probably have either a trim adjustment or a mechanical adjustment when we get everything hooked up. Um, one of our batteries is done charging. That's the beeping you're hearing, guys. Now, without further ado, we are gonna do a little unbox. <laughs> this is something that I had hoped to come up with an opportunity to share with you. And I didn't know it was gonna be this quick, but uh, this is something that I've been looking forward to sharing and looking for an opportunity to share. So I guess we're gonna take the opportunity that, that came from Banggood. So this is a hand skit, hand, hand skit, okay, whatever that means. Okay. Um, this is a thermal control soldering iron. So this runs on, it's supposed to be 110. Something. So we're hoping that it's 110. Okay, so we're just gonna open it. In the past, I'd use this uh, Weller, which is a 40 watt soldering iron. And I really like the pencil style soldering iron. I use those at work and I use these at home too. But this is actually a little bit different setup. It's got a little bit more to it. It does come with some solder, which is nice, ROHS compliant, which I don't know if it actually is or not. Temperature compensation, blah, blah, blah. Don't, I'm not gonna read that anyway. And then something just hit me that was sharp. Okay, it looks like this. And this was one of the big things I wanted about this. And then it comes with a humongous sponge. What is that for? I don't know. You probably don't know much soldering. See this? That's why, that's one of the reasons I ended up with this is because I wanted to be able to put the cap on it and then I can slide this in a tool bag without fear of catching the tool bag on fire after you're done. Now, you're still gonna wanna let it cool a little bit, but it's kinda neat to be able to cap it off and that'll help keep debris and different material off your tips so they don't look like that in two minutes. Mm -hmm. So this, it comes with this, this is a soldering stand. So this thing goes in here. Do you wanna show them what I'm doing here so they can see? This is supposed to go in here like that. There's a little spot, okay, cool. So you can fold that up. And then this world's most microscopic sponge, you can put at least two drips of water. Well, that's surprisingly a lot of water <laughs> held in that. That's crazy. Look at that. Um, okay, so then this thing plugs in. Obviously, you don't want to leave the cap on there when it's hot or when it's getting hot. That would not be a wise thing to do. Ooh, look at this. That's the other reason why I thought this was a good deal because it came with all these different tips. Obviously, this tip is not going to be ideal for what we're doing. Not sure how this tip system works. That's how it works. Whoa, that's different. Wow. I've never actually seen that tip style. Looks like you just drop it on there. That's weird. So this comes with engraving tips and it comes with the type that I like most, which is right here. Um, obviously, when you're soldering, you wanna transfer the temperature to your work surface or your workpiece efficiently. 
So then that just goes there. Then that keeps it gapped out. That's pretty cool. Then this slides back over the top. Okay. So now I'm assuming that's gonna get pretty hot still, but honestly, I'm not sure. It's got a nice heavy duty cable on it. It's heavy duty enough that I have to kind of stretch it to get it straight. Mm -hmm. It's got the model number here. It's got a really high quality model number here. So that, that was cool, the way that came off. Super easy. You know why it was coming off? Because it's covering that. Well, no, what I was saying is I was trying to get the, there's a protective film on top of that decal. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I was nice. trying to take the protective film off and it took the whole label off. Uh, it's an ungrounded plug, which is what I like to see on a soldering iron typically, uh, because you don't want to have to be married to a, a ground. Okay, so you plug it in, it comes up with an off setting. Okay, so there's an on, I'm sure you press this. Okay, so that's, that's off, like actually off. And then there's plus. Oh, that's plus and minus, maybe. And then the circle is power, maybe? I don't know, it's on. It's warning us if it's on. So now it says off. Now it says whatever, what button is on? Six is power switch, the circle. The circle. Mm -hmm. What? And then seven temperature up. Oh, look. Plus. So then it's in Celsius. Oh, sweet. That's pretty cool. That, that's still weird because that's always on and that's always off, I thought. Because usually, okay, so you press and hold that. Turns it on and off. Okay. Oh, okay, there we go. So I want to make this really hot. I can smell it. Oh, yeah. This it's stenchy. Also says that it automatically goes to sleep after, after 15 minutes. Which is nice. And it should reach 480 Celsius in one minute which I have no idea what that is. Wow. That's really hot. Yeah, it's hot. I got your tip dirty already. I know. Jeez. And dug it right in. Okay, so this wire is gonna, wow, it's already to 480 degrees. That's crazy. Okay, so, so far that's what we got there. Now let's do some real soldering in a real environment. I guess technically we could use the provided um, this should have a rosin core to it, I'm assuming. Okay. So this just comes off. It doesn't screw off. Pull. I'm trying to pull. It doesn't want to pop off of there. Because I want to get the tail of that. Okay, whatever. Oh. I've lost interest in trying to do that. Okay. So now back to our plane repair. We need to fix this ESC. And so we're gonna take this opportunity to show you if this thing works or not. And I'm assuming it'll work just fine. Okay, so we have our little cleaning tip. Okay, so you can wipe off the tip. That looks nice and clean. I use flux. That's what that stuff is. And usually when I wanna solder something like this, I will just use a toothpick and get a little bit of flux and just put it on the work and uh, you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm just grabbing a little bit like so, and I'm just gonna get a little teeny bit of flux right where I want it, which is right on top of that. Are you gonna show them the soldering I'm surface like there? I'm zoomed in a bunch. Okay, cause I can't tell if you are, yep. I'm sorry. Okay, so that's probably a little bit too hot at 480. So I'm gonna see if I can turn that down. I'm not sure what the correct temperature would be in Celsius. Mm. I guess I could probably, oh, you see how it's, it's blinking at me? That's because it's, it's cooling off. And so it's warning me that it's cooling off. Oh. Okay. Come on now, you can do it. I'm evidently getting it way too hot because the flux is cooking off of there like almost instantly. But it is, it's getting the job done. Okay, so I'm gonna just use this rosin core solder here. You need to probably go to my left side there or you're not gonna see what I'm doing. The reason I'm blowing is to get the smoke away from my face. Okay, so we got a nice, that's well, way more controllable now. 
when I set it down to 306, probably a little bit too cold. So let's go up to like 326. Some of the stuff is a little bit guessing checky. Ooh, that worked a lot better. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that, now I need to probably grab a little something that I can use to, I'm laying that down on top of the stand. That works pretty good. I need to grab a little something like this because otherwise I'm gonna burn my fingers because the spot I need to hold is metallic. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I bumped it with my fingers. That's kind of annoying. Ooh, the temperature? Yeah, mm. but it's okay. It's not too bad yet. I do like the temp control because look at that. It's not getting all screwed up now. See? Yeah. It's just kind of keeping it nice. So now this, this needs to be soldered on, on there, okay? I kind of pulled this out to show you, but really it probably would have been better to just leave it in there. And this piece of white paper, whatever. Ooh, maybe I can hold that. See, I'm actually holding it. That's gonna work better. So I'm gonna heat this up, let that solder melt, and let this solder melt. I'm just gonna let it work together. And I don't wanna overheat the entire mechanism there. Trying to really get a robust connection there because I don't need that breaking again. Mm. You see how it changed colors and it's dull? That yeah. means I got a weak, I got a weak solder joint there. Do you see that, how it's not shiny? Mm -hmm. You want it to be shiny. Mm -hmm. That can also just mean that you have like a silver based instead of a lead based. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's pretty decent. It's not perfect. I'm just, I'm just getting a little bit too, too much side load on it as I do it. Okay, I think we're okay there. So now we'll go ahead and I wanna see how long it takes to cool off. So if you press and hold the minus and that's how you turn it off or you press no, this? press the zero. And then what does it say? It just flashes at uh, you? Maybe you have to press and hold to turn it off. Oh, okay. Okay, now it says off. So I'm curious to see about how long that's gonna to take to cool. Plus, do I, need to, do I need to tin the tip before I put it away like I normally would and then clean it? I think that's gonna work okay. That's pretty nice. Does it fit in this holder that I use? This crappy holder that I have? It kind of does. It's maybe not great, but it does actually fit. Okay, so this is off. So we're gonna see how that does in a couple of minutes and just see if it's worthwhile. This might be better for, you know, transported to the field or whatever than the bench style. This landing gear, I'm just gonna to try to tweak that back square a little bit better. Okay, that's square now, more square than it was. Okay, so now that that's soldered, now we can see if it's got enough mechanical strength. It's pretty warm still. And we wanna just make sure we can unplug that wire. Yep, it comes out and that stays. Okay, so that's gonna tell us if we have enough mechanical strength to keep it from breaking off under normal conditions, which are you know, under normal conditions, there shouldn't be any load at all on that mechanical load. So now in order to solve that, ooh, there's a light glowing on this. Does that mean it's off? It just says, it just off. says off. Okay. Well, it's plugged in, it must just be. Yeah. Or maybe it times out after a while. I'm not sure. So our only thing that we need to do on this is we really just kind of need to test it now and make sure everything is electrically sound. And we'll test it with a 2200 3S, which is what we started the flight on. So, um, hmm. I think we're gonna have to put this prop back on to actually test it under load. Oh. So I can test all that with this cover off. Okay. So let's do that now. That thing's cooled down really nicely. Hmm. Fairly quick. The cord's a little bit bulky, but I think over time you could work this by just taking those kinks out each time that you use it. That's one thing that's annoying is when you get it. This is a heavier duty cord than on this Weller. This has just a really fine cable. 
-hmm. It's almost like a lamp cable. Mm -hmm. And this has a more robust and round molded cable that's got a heavy duty molded end, but it's still only two prongs, which is nice. So I think that's good. It's definitely not really hot. I don't want to touch it to find out, but it's definitely, it's definitely got a little bit of temperature to it. Where did that come from? I don't know. It's just oh, there. you know what? I think that came from the kit. Is that, that's definitely not solder. I wonder if, if that's how you're supposed to get this thing out to get the solder started pulling out. I think I'm just going to stick that there and we'll use it up when we're willing to break that vessel to get it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in order to finish this project up, now that we have unboxed the soldering iron and seemed to work pretty good, we need to go ahead and tape this with electrical tape just to kind of give it a little protection. Um, I don't want like it's a small splash of water or something to get in there uh, if we hit wet grass or, or something like that. So we're gonna grab some electrical tape, some black electrical tape and put away the drill and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're just gonna use a little regular electrical black vinyl tape uh, just to kind of protect this. If you were super careful the way that you repaired it, you wouldn't maybe necessarily have to do this, but I just wanna get it put together so that it's not super easy to short out. That's the key. Okay, so now that that's done, we can kind of tangle these motor whiting leads that are off the one side of the ESC, the output side. Then we're just gonna stuff that back into the very tight opening. Mm -hmm. Oh, son of a gun, would you look at that? We're gonna have to re-glue that now. It's a little tight. It's tight like a taiga. It's actually, it's actually not too bad. Um, if you get it at an angle, it's not gonna go. If you get it square, it should be fine. Okay, so that's where it needs to be. And I don't want these wires up on top of those surfaces. Now this little thing, let's just make sure we stick that on there correctly. So that's supposed to be like this, because if you go the other way, it's gonna repel. Nope, it's not gonna repel, good. Okay, so I can actually just get a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna glue onto this surface. And that way when we put this back together, it's just gonna take care of itself while we're working on other stuff. Hopefully you don't need back in there. And I'm willing to gamble that we won't. If you really want this to be perfect, you can lay this down and put a piece of tape across it. But since I have it in place where it needs to be, I'll just drop it back in as though I'm not gonna worry. Okay, so just like that. Okay, then this little tape that got damaged here, we just need a short little piece of scotch tape to fix that. That should be pretty straightforward stuff. A lot of steps, you may have noticed. Did you notice, camera crew? I noticed, I did. Honestly, this is, it's, I don't even really, I kind of enjoy fixing these things, but I don't enjoy the time. The time for us is the big factor that we can't afford. I don't actually mind fixing them. Used to help Esteban all the time fixing his planes when he'd crash them. Boy, that doesn't stick at all. No, that's crazy. But that doesn't matter anyway. You know why? Why is, what's it for? You know what? Oh, problem solved. Problem solved. You know what that is? What? I think that was supposed to be where you put your glue to glue this back on, but I'm gonna just glue it back on again anyway. Yeah. Cause I don't really think it's that big a deal. So we've already got this relatively fresh glue. So I'm just gonna glue it again and then it'll be done. I don't really know why they needed that piece of tape there. Yeah, it's Seems kind of like overkill and stupid. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, you haven't even tested it to make sure it's gonna work. I know, I agree. I like to live dangerously. Dangerously. Okay, so this needs to go on this side? Yep. Oh yeah, that's a good fit. Okay, so that's- You got a gap at the top. Or maybe it's just the decal, there you go. Okay, so it's on there. That's gonna have to get compressed back in there again. 
So now that we have that done, I think the best, safest, most efficient use of our time is to just put it together and be done with it, knowing that it's going to work because it's going to work. Sure. The behavior we saw from the ESC was exactly explained by having one lead dis disconnected. Yep. Because it had enough magnetic force to move the stator, but it didn't have enough to keep it going because it got all out of timing. That's exactly what you'll see happen when you have one lead come undone. And we heard it. I don't know if they'll be able to hear it in the video when you were flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was spinning. Because mm -hmm. even with no load, this thing will still spin. It'll still tractor in the air. Tractoring meaning it runs without any. So like that's a tractoring prop. Okay. So a tractoring prop creates more drag than a still prop in case you guys weren't aware, which I just thought was crazy when I got into flying radio controlled airplanes. It was just one of those aerodynamic principles that makes no sense before you sit and think about it a little bit. Okay. So we're just obviously going back through in reverse order from where we tore this all apart. So luckily the foam on this plane is pretty forgiving. So like a couple of these nicks and bruises and things, uh, you won't even be able to, to tell that there was damage other than the hour and a half long video of me fixing it. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, this is just kind of what I do. I've unboxed stuff and then, <laughs> do, you, do you remember that little helicopter we did for Banggood? that uh, <laughs> I had to fix the gimbal. Yeah. And you know, what is that? It's like one of those worst videos ever. And then mm -hmm. you get like 250,000 views on it. Yeah. And you're like, couldn't, couldn't I get 250,000 views on a video that went well? Something else, yeah. Something that was like actually productive and useful. Yes, exactly. Instead of how we fixed our brand new toy that you should then go buy. <laughs> We've done a few of those. But that's, that's what we do on this channel. We show you how to fix them when they break because if you're flying radio controlled airplanes from China, they're gonna break. Yep. Sorry. And uh, that's not anything against China, but if you can make this thing um, paying for American labor and you can then sell it at a profit for like 200 and some odd dollars and then pay shipping and all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, do that. I will support your business. Um, but yeah, good luck with that. Okay, so let's rotate this. We'll tape the other side. For what it's worth, I really like this plane and that's why I'm putting the time into fixing it. If I didn't like it, I would just clipped out the second crash and just been done with it. But I actually really do like this plane and I wanted it forever. So I'm just not gonna tolerate, I'm just not gonna take no for an answer. Gravity, no! <laughs> okay, so that's taped now. So if we need to get in there, we'll have to cut the tape, which will be a tragedy. Okay. I would put the battery in from up here, but you can't do, can't that. do that. You have to flip her over and stick it in the back. Bottom. It's not usually the recommended method. Oh, I don't know. Usually enjoy it just fine. Okay, so we're just gonna put the 2200 3S in here. Um, let it go up there so that everybody can see the pilot and how dorky he is. It's a big, huge square. Big, dorky square. Okay. Three tracks. Cool. Cool. Just looking at this for alignment. Okay, that's pretty good. So now if you wanted this to move quicker or move more, um, just go ahead and get a different plane because that's about as, say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't going to actually do that. Okay. So elevator up, down, up, down, rudder. Ooh, the rudder looks nice. Yeah. A lot more deflection, not binding yeah, mechanically and it's pretty well straight. So I think our trim is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the flaps, 
look good, check the mounts, make sure they're not broke free, make sure the control surface isn't broken free. I'm just touching each of the spots where it's mounted. Ailerons holding, make sure that the gears aren't stripped. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the elevator. Not stripped, not stripped. Now, you're probably saying, what do you mean stripped or not? If the gear set gets stripped in your servo, we can actually show them on the aileron, see this? Or that's the flap. You see that? Whoops. See how there's gears? So the output shaft goes to this gear, then that gear goes to this gear, that gear goes to this gear, which turns the trim pot, which goes back as feedback to the controller. And then on that other side of the output, it goes up to another gear, and then from that gear, it goes over to the output shaft. And you can see they turn at different rates, and that increases the torque from this little dinky crappy motor. And that also allows for the feedback controller board to tell that where to go until it reaches the position of the output based on what the pulse width modulation on that channel says. Did you get that? I got it. I was Good. taking notes. I knew you would. Okay. The momento of truth. Are you ready? Where do you want me to stand? Uh, you're fine. Okay. Just wherever. I want to hold it like this because I don't just want to see if it goes. I know it'll go. See that one's vibrating a little bit? It's just vibrating probably because I think it got bent just a hair maybe at some point. Mm. It's definitely got power. Mm -hmm. I think that what we're seeing is actually a slight bend in the spinner. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. sucks because you ain't fixing that. Right. I think you're right though. It's in the spinner see. because when this spins, it's, I don't think it's a prop, it's the spinner itself. See how the spinner... Yeah. See how it's pretty even there? You get a whole lot more power if that spinner was balanced. But luckily, this is a toy airplane. <laughs> and if the square gets killed, then it's not the end of the world. It's fixed. It's fixed and ready to fly again and take on the world. So now that you've seen that whole process, what I want you to do is sit back, relax, and you can watch the unbox, build, and then probably what's gonna happen is we are going to I don't know if we're gonna show that whole, this whole portion until the end or if we're gonna show it at the beginning. But one way or another, we're gonna show a flight at the beginning, we'll show the unbox build and setup, and then we'll go ahead and follow up with the second flight with the larger 4,000 uh, 4, milliamp hour 3S 30C smart pack, and then you can watch the crash and the repairs to the damage. So you've already seen it and that's what we're gonna do. If you like this plane, which I really do, which is why I put the effort into fixing it, definitely check for the link in the description below. This plane is cool. I like it a lot. It flies decent. Feels like it maybe could use a little bit more nose weight. This soldering iron, you'll notice, it does look a little bit like a, you know, like a hair iron now that it's got the cap on. You could curl your little gray up there. I could curl the gray. But that, that cap works nice. And by the way, I don't know if I showed you that but there's a hole on the end to oh. let the heat out. Mm -hmm. um, it does appear to be heat resistant. So that worked out really nice. So if you wanna buy that, we'll link to it in the description below. Uh, obviously when you guys buy things, you're supporting our channel financially uh, because the suppliers support us then a little bit. So of course nobody's getting rich on that. So if you like what you see and you wanna help support us, that is the number one way. Actually the number one way is to watch like and subscribe so that the YouTube algorithms preferentially treat our videos. And then secondly, you can buy from the links below. And that is really what helps keep this channel going and helps my wife to not murder me and bear me in the backyard because of this habit. 
which could happen if you don't buy enough stuff for my links. So if all of a sudden I don't like make a video for six months or something, maybe call and just have them check. We've got a big yard. It is so a big yard. Know. It is big. You might want to have them check, have the tractor, authorities check. So that's true. We could, I mean, she could dig a hole if she wanted to learn <laughs> to use it. So, or maybe she'd have somebody help her. So if that ever happens, <laughs> Definitely, please <laughs> check on it for my sake. And then buy things so you can help pay for the legal bills. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm glad this is the end of the video because only the ultra, the we'll ultra fanatic subscribers yes. and viewers are going to be watching this deep into the video. Yeah. Uh, because we usually don't get into the murder. People the are going to throw yeah. us. Yeah. They're going to be like, something's wrong with them. <laughs> let's, let's give them some help. Yeah. Anyway, I really like this plane, guys. I'm super bummed that we had the crash. But to be honest, it's not the end of the world. And I really like this plane. I want to fly it right now, but look how dark it is. Yeah, I think you're out of time. I think I'm out of time too. And by the way, the stabilization, I've been really impressed with how well it works. I, I had no clue what to expect because this is the, um, the, the Detrim, Detrim brand. I don't even know exactly how you're supposed to say it, but uh, the Dynam brand. And I've been really happy with the way that this has worked. I was very nervous about that. Um, I might also suggest that the NX6 line has been great too. And so if you decided to throw a Spectrum receiver in this thing and do it, you know, that would be another really good option. And Tom, thanks for this. It's actually been a back saver, which is mm -hmm. something that I haven't mentioned a lot, but these plane stands really do help to keep the load up and closer to your chest and body, which helps a lot on your lower back. If you guys have lower back issues, get one of these things. It's kind of annoying to have this big thing to store, but in our case, we have a spot that works really good for it. And it's super light and it's not really easy to damage. So yeah, that's nice. These planes will kill your back if you do a lot of them. And we do a lot more than average. So you end up standing at a table for a few hours. It's maybe not a big deal. You now do that four times a week and you'll not be so happy if you're an old bar like me. All right. You've learned a lot about us today that you didn't know. <laughs> On that note. Bye from the links. Thanks for watching guys.